section zero of child harold's pilgrimage this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org child harold's pilgrimage by george gordon lord byron to ianthe not in those climes where i have late been straying though beauty long hath there been matchless deemed not in those visions to the heart displaying forms which it sighs but to have only dreamed hath aught like thee in truth or fancy seemed nor having seen thee shall i vainly seek to paint those charms which varied as they beamed to such as see thee not my words were weak to those who gaze on thee what language could they speak ah mayst thou ever be what now thou art nor unbeseem the promise of thy spring as fair in form as warm yet pure in heart love's image upon earth without his wing and guileless beyond hope's imagining and surely she who now so fondly rears thy youth in thee thus hourly brightening beholds the rainbow of her future years before whose heavenly hues all sorrow disappears young perry of the west tis well for me my years already doubly number thine my loveless eye unmoved may gaze on thee and safely view thy ripening beauties shine happy i ne'er shall see them in decline happier that while all younger hearts shall bleed mine shall escape the doom thine eyes assign to those whose admiration shall succeed but mixed with pangs to love's even loveliest hours decreed oh let that eye which wild as the gazelles now brightly bold or beautifully shy wins as it wanders dazzles where it dwells glance o'er this page nor to my verse deny that smile for which my breast might vainly sigh could i to thee be ever more than friend this much dear maid accord nor question why to one so young my strain i would commend but bid me with my wreath one matchless lily blend such is thy name with this my verse entwined and long as kinder eyes a look shall cast on harold's page ianthes here enshrined shall thus be first beheld forgotten last my days once numbered should this homage past attract thy fairy fingers near the lyre of him who hailed thee loveliest as thou wast such is the most my memory may desire though more than hope can claim could friendship less require End of To Ianthe Section 1 of Child Harold's Pilgrimage by George Gordon Lord Byron This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Canto the First 1. O oh, thou, in Hellas deemed of heavenly birth, Muse, formed or fabled at the minstrel's will, since shamed full oft by later liars on earth mine dares not call thee from thy sacred hill yet there i've wandered by thy vaunted rill yes sighed o'er delphi's long deserted shrine where save that feeble fountain all is still nor mote my shell awake the weary nine to grace so plain a tale this lowly lay of mine two while home in albion's isle there dwelt a youth who nay in virtue's ways did take delight but spent his days in riot most uncouth and vexed with mirth the drowsy ear of night ah me in sooth he was a shameless wight sore given to revel and ungodly glee few earthly things found favour in his sight save concubines and carnal company and flaunting wassailers of high and low degree three child harold was he hight but whence his name and lineage long it suits me not to say suffice it that perchance they were of fame and had been glorious in another day but one sad losel soils a name for i however mighty in the olden time nor all that heralds rake from coffined clay nor florid prose nor honeyed lines of rhyme can blazon evil deeds or consecrate a crime four child harold basked him in the noontide sun disporting there like any other fly nor deemed before his little day was done one blast might chill him into misery 
but long ere scarce a third of his passed by worse than adversity the child befell he felt the fullness of satiety then loathed he in his native land to dwell which seemed to him more lone than eremit's sad cell five for he through sin's long labyrinth had run nor made atonement when he did amiss had sighed to many though he loved but one and that loved one alas could ne'er be his ah happy she to scape from him whose kiss had been pollution unto aught so chaste who soon had left her charms for vulgar bliss and spoiled her goodly lands to gild his waist nor calm domestic peace had ever deigned to taste six and now child harold was sore sick at heart and from his fellow bacchanals would flee tis said at times the sullen tear would start but pride congealed the drop within his e apart he stalked in joyless reverie and from his native land resolved to go and visit scorching climes beyond the sea with pleasure drugged he almost longed for woe and e'en for change of scene would seek the shades below seven the child departed from his father's hall it was a vast and venerable pile so old it seemed only not to fall yet strength was pillared in each massy aisle monastic dome condemned to uses vile where superstition once had made her den now paphian girls were known to sing and smile and monks might deem their time was come again if ancient tales say true nor wrong these holy men eight yet oft times in his maddest mirthful mood strange pangs would flash along child harold's brow as if the memory of some deadly feud or disappointed passion lurked below but this none knew nor haply cared to know for his was not that open artless soul that feels relief by bidding sorrow flow nor sought he friend to counsel or condole whate'er this grief mote be which he could not control nine and none did love him though to hall and bower he gathered revellers from far and near he knew them flatterers of the festal hour the heartless parasites of present cheer yea none did love him not his leman's dear but pomp and power alone are woman's care and where these are light eros finds a fear maidens like moths are ever caught by glare and mammon wins his way where seraphs might despair ten child harold had a mother not forgot though parting from that mother he did shun a sister whom he loved but saw her not before his weary pilgrimage begun if friends he had he bade adieu to none yet deem not thence his breast a breast of steel ye who have known what tis to dote upon a few dear objects will in sadness feel such partings break the heart they fondly hope to heal eleven his house his home his heritage his lands the laughing dames in whom he did delight whose large blue eyes fair locks and snowy hands might shake the saintship of an anchorite and long had fed his youthful appetite his goblets brimmed with every costly wine and all that mote to luxury invite without a sigh he left to cross the brine and traverse Paynim shores and pass earth's central line twelve the sails were filled and fair the light winds blew as glad to waft him from his native home and fast the white rocks faded from his view and soon were lost in circumambient foam and then it may be of his wish to roam repented he but in his bosom slept the silent thought nor from his lips did come one word of wail whilst others sat and wept and to the reckless gales unmanly moaning kept thirteen but when the sun was sinking in the sea he seized his harp which he at times could string and strike albeit with untaught melody when deemed he no strange ear was listening and now his fingers o'er it he did fling and tuned his farewell in the dim twilight while flew the vessel on her snowy wing and fleeting shores receded from his sight thus to the elements he poured his last good night adieu adieu my native shore fades o'er the waters blue the night winds sigh the breakers roar and shrieks the wild sea mew yon sun that sets upon the sea we follow in his flight farewell a while to him and thee my native land good night a few short hours and he will rise to give the morrow birth 
and i shall hail the main and skies but not my mother earth deserted is my own good hall its hearth is desolate wild weeds are gathering on the wall my dog howls at the gate come hither hither my little page why dost thou weep and wail or dost thou dread the billow's rage or tremble at the gale but dash the teardrop from thine eye our ship is swift and strong our fleetest falcon scarce can fly more merrily along let winds be shrill let waves roll high i fear not wave nor wind yet marvel not sir child that i am sorrowful in mind for i have from my father gone a mother whom i love and have no friend save these alone but thee and one above my father blessed me fervently yet did not much complain but sorely will my mother sigh till i come back again enough enough my little lad such tears become thine eye if i thy guileless bosom had mine own would not be dry come hither hither my staunch yeoman why dost thou look so pale or dost thou dread a french foeman or shiver at the gale deemst thou i tremble for my life sir child i'm not so weak but thinking on an absent wife will blanch a faithful cheek my spouse and boys dwell near thy hall along the bordering lake and when they on their father call what answer shall she make enough enough my yeoman good thy grief let none gainsay but i who am of lighter mood will laugh to flee away for who would trust the seeming sighs of wife or paramour fresh fears will dry the bright blue eyes we late saw streaming o'er for pleasures past i do not grieve nor perils gathering near my greatest grief is that i leave no thing that claims a tear and now i'm in the world alone upon the wide wide sea but why should i for others groan when none will sigh for me perchance my dog will whine in vain till fed by stranger hands but long ere i come back again he'd tear me where he stands with thee my bark i'll swiftly go athwart the foaming brine nor care what land thou bear'st me to so not again to mine welcome welcome ye dark blue waves and when you fail my sight welcome ye deserts and ye caves my native land good night fourteen on on the vessel flies the land is gone and winds are rude in biscay's sleepless bay four days are sped but with the fifth anon new shores descried make every bosom gay and sintra's mountain greets them on their way and tagus dashing onward to the deep his fabled golden tribute bent to pay and soon on board the lusian pilots leap and steer twixt fertile shores where yet few rustics reap fifteen o christ it is a goodly sight to see what heaven hath done for this delicious land what fruits of fragrance blush on every tree what goodly prospects o'er the hills expand but man would mar them with an impious hand and when the almighty lifts his fiercest scourge gainst those who most transgress his high command with treble vengeance will his hot shafts urge gaul's locust host and earth from fellest foemen purge sixteen what beauties doth lisboa first unfold her image floating on that noble tide which poets vainly pave with sands of gold but now whereon a thousand keels did ride of mighty strength since albion was allied and to the lusians did her aid afford a nation swoln with ignorance and pride who lick yet loathe the hand that waves the sword to save them from the wrath of gaul's unsparing lord seventeen but whoso entereth within this town that sheening far celestial seems to be disconsolate will wander up and down mid many things unsightly to strange ye for hut and palace show like filthily the dingy denizens are reared in dirt no personage of high or mean degree doth care for cleanness of surtout or shirt though shent with egypt's plague unkempt unwashed unhurt eighteen poor paltry slaves yet born midst noblest scenes why nature waste thy wonders on such men lo sintra's glorious eden intervenes in variegated maze of mount and glen ah me what hand can pencil guide or pen to follow half on which the eye dilates through views more dazzling unto mortal ken than those whereof such things the bard relates who to the awe-struck world unlocked elysium's gates nineteen the horrid crags by toppling convent crowned the cork-trees hoar that clothe the shaggy steep 
the mountain moss by scorching skies embrowned the sunken glen whose sunless shrubs must weep the tender azure of the unruffled deep the orange tints that gild the greenest bough the torrents that from cliff to valley leap the vine on high the willow branch below mixed in one mighty scene with varied beauty glow twenty then slowly climb the many winding way and frequent turn to linger as you go from loftier rocks new loveliness survey and rest ye at our lady's house of woe where frugal monks their little relics show and sundry legends to the stranger tell here impious men have punished been and lo deep in yon cave honorius long did dwell in hope to merit heaven by making earth a hell twenty one and here and there as up the crags you spring mark many rude carved crosses near the path yet deem not these devotions offering these are memorials frail of murderous wrath for wheresoe'er the shrieking victim hath poured forth his blood beneath the assassin's knife some hand erects a cross of mouldering lath and grove and glen with thousand such are rife throughout this purple land where law secures not life twenty two on sloping mounds or in the vale beneath are domes where whilom kings did make repair but now the wild flowers round them only breathe yet ruined splendour still is lingering there and yonder towers the prince's palace fair there thou too vathek england's wealthiest son once formed thy paradise as not aware when wanton wealth her mightiest deeds hath done meek peace voluptuous lures was ever wont to shun twenty three here didst thou dwell here schemes of pleasure plan beneath yon mountain's ever beauteous brow but now as if a thing unblessed by man thy fairy dwelling is as lone as thou here giant weeds a passage scarce allow to halls deserted portals gaping wide fresh lessons to the thinking bosom how vain are the pleasances on earth supplied swept into wrecks anon by time's ungentle tide twenty four behold the hall where chiefs were late convened o dome displeasing unto british eye with diadem height full scap lo a fiend a little fiend that scoffs incessantly there sits in parchment robe arrayed and by his side is hung a seal and sable scroll where blazoned glare names known to chivalry and sundry signatures adorn the roll whereat the urchin points and laughs with all his soul twenty five convention is the dwarfish demon styled that foiled the knights in marialva's dome of brains if brains they had he them beguiled and turned a nation's shallow joy to gloom here folly dashed to earth the victor's plume and policy regained what arms had lost for chiefs like ours in vain may laurels bloom woe to the conquering not the conquered host since baffled triumph droops on lusitania's coast twenty six and ever since that martial synod met britannia sickens sintra at thy name and folks in office at the mention fret and fain would blush if blush they could for shame how will posterity the deed proclaim will not our own and fellow nations sneer to view these champions cheated of their fame by foes in fight or throne yet victors here where scorn her finger points through many a coming year twenty seven so deemed the child as o'er the mountains he did take his way in solitary guise sweet was the scene yet soon he thought to flee more restless than the swallow in the skies though here a while he learned to moralize for meditation fixed at times on him and conscious reason whispered to despise his early youth misspent in maddest whim but as he gazed on truth his aching eyes grew dim twenty eight to horse to horse he quits forever quits a scene of peace though soothing to his soul again he rouses from his moping fits but seeks not now the harlot and the bowl onward he flies nor fixed as yet the goal where he shall rest him on his pilgrimage and o'er him many changing scenes must roll ere toil his thirst for travel can assuage or he shall calm his breast or learn experience sage twenty nine yet mafra shall one moment claim delay where dwelt of yore the lusian's luckless queen and church and court did mingle their array and mass and revel were alternate seen lordlings and frères ill-sorted fry i ween but here the babylonian whore had built a dome where flaunts she in such glorious sheen that men forget the blood which she hath spilt 
and bow the knee to pomp that loves to garnish guilt thirty or vales that teem with fruits romantic hills oh that such hills upheld a free-born race whereon to gaze the eye with joyance fills child harold wends through many a pleasant place though sluggards deem it but a foolish chase and marvel men should quit their easy chair the toilsome way and long long league to trace oh there is sweetness in the mountain air and life that bloated ease can never hope to share thirty one more bleak to view the hills at length recede and less luxuriant smoother vales extend immense horizon bounded plains succeed far as the eye discerns without an end spain's realms appear whereon her shepherds tend flocks whose rich fleece right well the trader knows now must the pastor's arm his lambs defend for spain is compassed by unyielding foes and all must shield their all or share subjection's woes thirty two where lusitania and her sister meet deem ye what bounds the rival realms divide or ere the jealous queens of nations greet doth teo interpose his mighty tide or dark sierras rise in craggy pride or fence of art like china's vasty wall nay barrier wall nay river deep and wide nay horrid crags nor mountains dark and tall rise like the rocks that part hispania's land from gaul thirty three but these between a silver streamlet glides and scarce a name distinguisheth the brook though rival kingdoms press its verdant sides here leans the idle shepherd on his crook and vacant on the rippling waves doth look that peaceful still twixt bitterest foemen flow for proud each peasant as the noblest duke well doth the spanish hind the difference know twixt him and lusian slave the lowest of the low thirty four but ere the mingling bounds have far been passed dark guadiana rolls his power along in sullen billows murmuring and vast so noted ancient roundelays among while em upon his banks did legions throng of moor and night in mailed splendour dressed here ceased the swift their race here sunk the strong the panim turban and the christian crest mixed on the bleeding stream by floating hosts oppressed thirty five o lovely spain renowned romantic land where is that standard which pelagio bore when carver's traitor sire first called the band that dyed thy mountain streams with gothic gore where are those bloody banners which of yore waved o'er thy sons victorious to the gale and drove at last the spoilers to their shore red gleamed the cross and waned the crescent pale while afric's echoes thrilled with moorish matrons wail thirty six teems not each ditty with the glorious tale ah such alas the hero's amplest fate when granite moulders and when records fail a peasant's plaint prolongs his dubious date pride bend thine eye from heaven to thine estate see how the mighty shrink into a song can volume pillar pile preserve thee great or must thou trust tradition's simple tongue when flattery sleeps with thee and history does thee wrong thirty seven awake ye sons of spain awake advance low chivalry your ancient goddess cries but wields not as of old her thirsty lance nor shakes her crimson plumage in the skies now on the smoke of blazing bolts she flies and speaks in thunder through yon engine's roar in every peal she calls awake arise say is her voice more feeble than of yore when her war song was heard on andalusia's shore thirty eight hark heard you not those hoofs of dreadful note sounds not the clang of conflict on the heath saw ye not whom the reeking sabre smote nor saved your brethren ere they sank beneath tyrants and tyrants slaves the fires of death the bale fires flash on high from rock to rock each volley tells that thousands cease to breathe death rides upon the sulphury siroc red battle stamps his foot and nations feel the shock thirty nine lo where the giant on the mountain stands his blood-red tresses deepening in the sun with death-shot glowing in his fiery hands and eye that scorcheth all it glares upon restless it rolls now fixed and now anon flashing afar and at his iron feet destruction cowers to mark what deeds are done for on this morn three potent nations meet to shed before his shrine the blood he deems most sweet Forty 
by heaven it is a splendid sight to see for one who hath no friend no brother there their rival scarfs of mixed embroidery their various arms that glitter in the air what gallant war-hounds rouse them from their lair and gnash their fangs loud yelling for the prey all join the chase but few the triumph share the grave shall bear the chiefest prize away and havoc scarce for joy can cumber their array forty one three hosts combine to offer sacrifice three tongues prefer strange orisons on high three gaudy standards flout the pale blue skies the shouts are france spain albion victory the foe the victim and the fond ally that fights for all but ever fights in vain are met as if at home they could not die to feed the crow on talavera's plain and fertilize the fields that each pretends to gain forty two there shall they rot ambition's honoured fools yes honour decks the turf that wraps their clay vain sophistry in these behold the tools the broken tools that tyrants cast away by myriads when they dare to pave their way with human hearts to what a dream alone can despots compass aught that hails their sway or call with truth one span of earth their own save that wherein at last they crumble bone by bone forty three o albuera glorious field of grief as o'er thy plain the pilgrim pricked his steed who could foresee thee in a space so brief a scene where mingling foes should boast and bleed peace to the perished may the warriors mead and tears of triumph their reward prolong till others fall where other chieftains lead thy name shall circle round the gaping throng and shine in worthless lays the theme of transient song forty four enough of battle's minions let them play their game of lives and barter breath for fame fame that will scarce reanimate their clay though thousands fall to deck some single name in sooth twere sad to thwart their noble aim who strike blessed hirelings for their country's good and die that living might have proved her shame perished perchance in some domestic feud or in a narrower sphere wild rapine's path pursued forty five full swiftly harold wends his lonely way where proud sevilla triumphs unsubdued yet is she free the spoilers wished for prey soon soon shall conquest's fiery foot intrude blackening her lovely domes with traces rude inevitable hour gainst fate to strive where desolation plants her famished brood is vain or ilion tyre might yet survive and virtue vanquish all and murder cease to thrive forty six but all unconscious of the coming doom the feast the song the revel here abounds strange modes of merriment the hours consume nor bleed these patriots with their country's wounds nor hear war's clarion but love's rebeck sounds here folly still his votaries enthralls and young-eyed lewdness walks her midnight rounds girt with the silent crimes of capitals still to the last kind vice clings to the tottering walls forty seven not so the rustic with his trembling mate he lurks nor casts his heavy eye afar lest he should view his vineyard desolate blasted below the dun hot breath of war no more beneath soft eve's consenting star fandango twirls his jocund castanet ah monarchs could ye taste the mirth ye mar not in the toils of glory would ye fret the hoarse dull drum would sleep and man be happy yet forty eight how carols now the lusty muleteer of love romance devotion is his lay as whilom he was wont the leagues to cheer his quick bells wildly jingling on the way no as he speeds he chants vive el rey and checks his song to execrate godoy the royal witol charles and curse the day when first spain's queen beheld the black-eyed boy and gore-faced treason sprung from her adulterate joy forty nine on yon long level plain at distance crowned with crags whereon those moorish turrets rest wide scattered hoof marks dint the wounded ground and scathed by fire the greensward's darkened vest tells that the foe was andalusia's guest here was the camp the watch flame and the host here the brave peasant stormed the dragon's nest still does he mark it with triumphant boast and points to yonder cliffs which oft were won and lost Fifty and whomsoe'er along the path you meet bears in his cap the badge of crimson hue which tells you whom to shun and whom to greet 
woe to the man that walks in public view without of loyalty this token true sharp is the knife and sudden is the stroke and sorely would the gallic foeman rue if subtle poniards wrapped beneath the cloak could blunt the sabre's edge or clear the cannon's smoke fifty one at every turn morena's dusky height sustains aloft the battery's iron load and far as mortal eye can compass sight the mountain howitzer the broken road the bristling palisade the foss o'erflowed the stationed bands the never vacant watch the magazine in rocky durance stowed the holstered steed beneath the shed of thatch the ball piled pyramid the ever blazing match fifty two portend the deeds to come but he whose nod has tumbled feebler despots from their sway a moment pauseth ere he lifts the rod a little moment deigneth to delay soon will his legions sweep through these the way the west must own the scourger of the world ah spain how sad will be thy reckoning day when soars gaul's vulture with his wings unfurled and thou shalt view thy sons in crowds to hades hurled fifty three and must they fall the young the proud the brave to swell one bloated chief's unwholesome reign no step between submission and a grave the rise of rapine and the fall of spain and doth the power that man adores ordain their doom nor heed the suppliant's appeal is all that desperate valour acts in vain and counsel sage and patriotic zeal the veteran's skill youth's fire and manhood's heart of steel fifty four is it for this the spanish maid aroused hangs on the willow her unstrung guitar and all unsexed the anlis hath espoused sung the loud song and dared the deed of war and she whom once the semblance of a scar appalled an owlet's larum chilled with dread now views the column scattering bayonet jar the falchion flash and o'er the yet warm dead stalks with minerva's step where mars might quake to tread fifty five ye who shall marvel when you hear her tale or had you known her in her softer hour marked her black eye that mocks her coal-black veil heard her light lively tones in lady's bower seen her long locks that foil the painter's power her fairy form with more than female grace scarce would you deem that saragoza's tower beheld her smile in danger's gorgon face thin the closed ranks and lead in glory's fearful chase fifty six her lover sinks she sheds no ill-timed tear her chief is slain she fills his fatal post her fellows flee she checks their base career the foe retires she heads the sallying host who can appease like her a lover's ghost who can avenge so well a leader's fall what maid retrieve when man's flushed hope is lost who hangs so fiercely on the flying gall foiled by a woman's hand before a battered wall fifty seven yet are spain's maids no race of amazons but formed for all the witching arts of love though thus in arms they emulate her sons and in the horrid phalanx dare to move tis but the tender fierceness of the dove pecking the hand that hovers o'er her mate in softness as in firmness far above remoter females famed for sickening prate her mind is nobler sure her charms perchance as great fifty eight the seal love's dimpling finger hath impressed denotes how soft that chin which bears his touch her lips whose kisses pout to leave their nest bid man be valiant ere he merit such her glance how wildly beautiful how much hath phoebus wooed in vain to spoil her cheek which glows yet smoother from his amorous clutch who round the north for paler dames would seek how poor their forms appear how languid wan and weak Fifty nine match me ye climes which poets love to lord match me ye harems of the land where now i strike my strain far distant to applaud beauties that even a cynic must avow match me those houris whom ye scarce allow to taste the gale lest love should ride the wind with spain's dark glancing daughters deign to know there your wise prophet's paradise we find his black-eyed maids of heaven angelically kind Sixty o thou parnassus whom i now survey not in the frenzy of a dreamer's eye not in the fabled landscape of a lay but soaring snow-clad through thy native sky in the wild pomp of mountain majesty what marvel if i thus essay to sing 
the humblest of thy pilgrims passing by would gladly woo thine echoes with his string though from thy heights no more one muse will wave her wing sixty one oft have i dreamed of thee whose glorious name who knows not knows not man's divinest law and now i view thee tis alas with shame that i in feeblest accents must adore when i recount thy worshippers of yore i tremble and can only bend the knee nor raise my voice nor vainly dare to soar but gaze beneath thy cloudy canopy in silent joy to think at last i look on thee sixty two happier in this than mightiest bards have been whose fate to distant homes confined their lot shall i unmoved behold the hallowed scene which others rave of though they know it not though here no more apollo haunts his grot and thou the muses seat art now their grave some gentle spirit still pervades the spot sighs in the gale keeps silence in the cave and glides with glassy foot o'er yon melodious wave sixty three of thee hereafter even amidst my strain i turned aside to pay my homage here forgot the land the sons the maids of spain her fate to every free-born bosom dear and hailed thee not perchance without a tear now to my theme but from thy holy haunt let me some remnant some memorial bear yield me one leaf of daphne's deathless plant nor let thy votary's hope be deemed an idle vaunt sixty four but ne'er didst thou fair mount when greece was young see round thy giant base a brighter choir nor e'er did delphi when her priestess sung the pythian hymn with more than mortal fire behold a train more fitting to inspire the song of love than andalusia's maids nursed in the glowing lap of soft desire ah that to these were given such peaceful shades as greece can still bestow though glory fly her glades sixty five fair is proud seville let her country boast her strength her wealth her sight of ancient days but cadiz rising on the distant coast calls forth a sweeter though ignoble praise ah vice how soft are thy voluptuous ways while boyish blood is mantling who can scape the fascination of thy magic gaze a cherub hydra round us dost thou gape and mould to every taste thy dear delusive shape sixty six when paphos fell by time a cursed time the queen who conquers all must yield to thee the pleasures fled but sought as warmer clime and venus constant to her native sea to nought else constant hither deigned to flee and fixed her shrine within these walls of white though not to one dome circumscribeth she her worship but devoted to her right a thousand altars rise forever blazing bright sixty seven from morn till night from night till startled morn peeps blushing on the revel's laughing crew the song is heard the rosy garland worn devices quaint and frolics ever new tread on each other's kibes a long adieu he bids to sober joy that here sojourns nought interrupts the riot though in lieu of true devotion monkish incense burns and love and prayer unite or rule the hour by turns sixty eight the sabbath comes a day of blessed rest what hallows it upon this christian shore lo it is sacred to a solemn feast hark heard you not the forest monarch's roar crashing the lance he snuffs the spouting gore of man and steed o'erthrown beneath his horn the thronged arena shakes with shouts for more yells the mad crowd o'er entrails freshly torn nor shrinks the female eye nor e'en affects to mourn sixty nine the seventh day this the jubilee of man london right well thou know'st the day of prayer then thy spruce citizen washed artisan and smug apprentice gulp their weekly air thy coach of hackney whiskey one horse chair and humblest gig through sundry suburbs whirl to hampstead brentford harrow make repair till the tired jade the wheel forgets to hurl provoking envious gibe from each pedestrian churl Seventy some o'er thy thamus row the ribboned fair others along the safer turnpike fly some richmond hill ascend some scud to wear and many to the steep of highgate high ask ye boeotian shades the reason why tis to the worship of the solemn horn grasped in the holy hand of mystery in whose dread name both men and maids are sworn 
and consecrate the oath with draught and dance till morn seventy one all have their fooleries not alike are thine fair cadis rising o'er the dark blue sea soon as the matin bell proclaimeth nine thy saint adorers count the rosary much is the virgin teased to shrive them free well do i ween the only virgin there from crimes as numerous as her beadsmen be then to the crowded circus forth they fare young old high low at once the same diversion share seventy two the lists are oped the spacious area cleared thousands on thousands piled are seated round long ere the first loud trumpet's note is heard no vacant space for lated white is found here dons grandees but chiefly dames abound skilled in the ogle of a roguish eye yet ever well inclined to heal the wound none through their cold disdain are doomed to die as moonstruck bards complain by love's sad archery seventy three hushed is the din of tongues on gallant steeds with milk-white crest gold spur and light poised lance four cavaliers prepare for venturous deeds and lowly bending to the lists advance rich are their scarves their chargers featly prance if in the dangerous game they shine to-day the crowd's loud shout and ladies lovely glance best prize of better acts they bear away and all that kings or chiefs e'er gain their toils repay seventy four in costly sheen and gaudy cloak arrayed but all afoot the light-limbed matador stands in the centre eager to invade the lord of lowing herds but not before the ground with cautious tread is traversed o'er lest aught unseen should lurk to thwart his speed his arms a dart he fights aloof nor more can man achieve without the friendly steed alas too oft condemned for him to bear and bleed seventy five thrice sounds the clarion lo the signal falls the den expands and expectation mute gapes round the silent circle's peopled walls bounds with one lashing spring the mighty brute and wildly staring spurns with sounding foot the sand nor blindly rushes on his foe here there he points his threatening front to suit his first attack wide waving to and fro his angry tail red rolls his eyes dilated glow seventy six sudden he stops his eye is fixed away away thou heedless boy prepare the spear now is thy time to perish or display the skill that yet may check his mad career with well-timed croup the nimble coursers veer on foams the bull but not unscathed he goes streams from his flank the crimson torrent clear he flies he wheels distracted with his throes dart follows dart lance lance loud bellowing speak his woes seventy seven again he comes nor dart nor lance avail nor the wild plunging of the tortured horse though man and man's avenging arms assail vain are his weapons vainer is his force one gallant steed is stretched a mangled course another hideous sight unseemed appears his gory chest unveils life's panting source though death-struck still his feeble frame he rears staggering but stemming all his lord unharmed he bears seventy eight foiled bleeding breathless furious to the last full in the centre stands the bull at bay mid wounds and clinging darts and lances brassed and foes disabled in the brutal fray and now the matadors around him play shake the red cloak and poise the ready brand once more through all he bursts his thundering way vain rage the mantle quits the cunning hand wraps his fierce eye tis past he sinks upon the sand seventy nine where his vast neck just mingles with the spine sheathed in his form the deadly weapon lies he stops he starts disdaining to decline slowly he falls amidst triumphant cries without a groan without a struggle dies the decorated car appears on high the course is piled sweet sight for vulgar eyes four steeds that spurn the rein as swift as shy hurl the dark bull along scarce seen in dashing by eighty such the ungentle sport that oft invites the spanish maid and cheers the spanish swain nurtured in blood betimes his heart delights in vengeance gloating on another's pain what private feuds the troubled village stain though now one phalanxed host should meet the foe enough alas in humble homes remain to meditate gainst friends the secret blow 
for some slight cause of wrath whence life's warm stream must flow eighty one but jealousy has fled his bars his bolts his withered sentinel duenna sage and all whereat the generous soul revolts which the stern dotard deemed he could encage have passed to darkness with the vanished age who late so free as spanish girls were seen ere war uprose in his volcanic rage with braided tresses bounding o'er the green while on the gay dance shone night's lover loving queen eighty two oh many a time and oft had harold loved or dreamed he loved since rapture is a dream but now his wayward bosom was unmoved for not yet had he drunk of Letha's stream and lately had he learned with truth to deem love has no gift so grateful as his wings how fair how young how soft soe'er he seem full from the fount of joy's delicious springs some bitter o'er the flowers its bubbling venom flings eighty three yet to the beauteous form he was not blind though now it moved him as it moves the wise not that philosophy on such a mind e'er deigned to bend her chastely awful eyes but passion raves itself to rest or flies and vice that digs her own voluptuous tomb had buried long his hopes no more to rise pleasure's palled victim life a boring gloom wrote on his faded brow cursed cain's unresting doom eighty four still he beheld nor mingled with the throng but viewed them not with misanthropic hate fain would he now have joined the dance the song but who may smile that sinks beneath his fate nought that he saw his sadness could abate yet once he struggled against the demon's sway and as in beauty's bower he pensive sat poured forth this unpremeditated lay to charms as fair as those that soothed his happier day to inez nay smile not at my sullen brow alas i cannot smile again yet heaven avert that ever thou shouldst weep and haply weep in vain and dost thou ask what secret woe i bear corroding joy and youth and wilt thou vainly seek to know a pang even thou must fail to soothe it is not love it is not hate nor low ambition's honours lost that bids me loathe my present state and fly from all i prized the most it is that weariness which springs from all i meet or hear or see to me no pleasure beauty brings thine eyes have scarce a charm for me it is that settled ceaseless gloom the fabled hebrew wanderer bore that will not look beyond the tomb but cannot hope for rest before what exile from himself can flee to zones though more and more remote still still pursues where'er i be the blight of life the demon thought yet others wrapped in pleasure seem and taste of all that i forsake or may they still of transport dream and ne'er at least like me awake through many a clime tis mine to go with many a retrospection cursed and all my solace is to know whate'er betides i've known the worst what is that worst nay do not ask in pity from the search forbear smile on nor venture to unmask man's heart and view the hell that's there eighty five adieu fair cardis yea a long adieu who may forget how well thy walls have stood when all were changing thou alone wert true first to be free and last to be subdued and if amidst a scene a shock so rude some native blood was seen thy streets to die a traitor only fell beneath the feud here all were noble save nobility none hugged a conqueror's chain save fallen chivalry eighty six such be the sons of spain and strange her fate they fight for freedom who were never free a kingless people for a nerveless state her vassals combat when their chieftains flee true to the veriest slaves of treachery fond of a land which gave them naught but life pride points the path that leads to liberty back to the struggle baffled in the strife war war is still the cry war even to the knife eighty seven ye who would more of spain and spaniards know go read whate'er is writ of bloodiest strife whate'er keen vengeance urged on foreign foe can act is acting there against man's life from flashing scimitar to secret knife war mouldeth there each weapon to his need so may he guard the sister and the wife so may he make each cursed oppressor bleed so may such foes deserve the most remorseless deed eighty eight 
flows there a tear of pity for the dead look o'er the ravage of the reeking plain look on the hands with female slaughter red then to the dogs resign the unburied slain then to the vulture let each course remain albeit unworthy of the prey birds more let their bleached bones and blood's unbleaching stain long mark the battlefield with hideous awe thus only may our sons conceive the scenes we saw eighty nine nor yet alas the dreadful work is done fresh legions pour adown the pyrenees it deepens still the work is scarce begun nor mortal eye the distant end foresees fallen nations gaze on spain if freed she frees more than her fell pizarros once enchained strange retribution now columbia's ease repairs the wrongs that quito's sons sustained while o'er the parent clime prowls murder unrestrained ninety not all the blood at talavera shed not all the marvels of barossa's fight not albuera lavish of the dead have won for spain her well-asserted right when shall her olive branch be free from blight when shall she breathe her from the blushing toil how many a doubtful day shall sink in night ere the frank robber turn him from his spoil and freedom's stranger tree grow native of the soil ninety one and thou my friend since unavailing woe bursts from my heart and mingles with the strain had the sword laid thee with the mighty low pride might forbid in friendship to complain but thus unlaurelled to descend in vain by all forgotten save the lonely breast and mix unbleeding with the boasted slain while glory crowns so many a meaner crest what hadst thou done to sink so peacefully to rest ninety two o oh, known the earliest and esteemed the most dear to a heart where nought was left so dear though to my hopeless days for ever lost in dreams deny me not to see thee here and morn in secrets shall renew the tear of consciousness awaking to her woes and fancy hover o'er thy bloodless bier till my frail frame return to whence it rose and mourned and mourner lie united in repose ninety three here is one fit of harold's pilgrimage ye who of him may further seek to know shall find some tidings in a future page if he that rhymeth now may scribble mo is this too much stern critic say not so patience and ye shall hear what he beheld in other lands where he was doomed to go lands that contain the monuments of eld ere greece and grecian arts by barbarous hands were quelled end of canto the first Section two of Child Harold's Pilgrimage by George Gordon Lord Byron. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Canto the Second One Come, blue eyed maid of heaven, but thou, alas, didst never yet one mortal song inspire. Goddess of wisdom, here thy temple was, and is, despite of war and wasting fire, and years that bade thy worship to expire but worse than steel and flame and ages slow is the drear sceptre and dominion dire of men who never felt the sacred glow that thoughts of thee and thine on polished breasts bestow two ancient of days august athena where where are thy men of might thy grand in soul gone glimmering through the dream of things that were first in the race that led to glory's goal they won and passed away is this the whole a schoolboy's tale the wonder of an hour the warrior's weapon and the sophist's stole are sought in vain and o'er each mouldering tower dim with the mist of years gray flits the shade of power three son of the morning rise approach you here come but molest not yon defenceless urn look on this spot a nation's sepulchre abode of gods whose shrines no longer burn in gods must yield religions take their turn twas jove's tis mahomet's and other creeds will rise with other years till man shall learn vainly his incense soars his victim bleeds poor child of doubt and death whose hope is built on reeds four bound to the earth he lifts his eyes to heaven is not enough unhappy thing to know thou art 
is this a boon so kindly given that being thou wouldst be again and go thou knowest not rex'dst not to what region so on earth no more but mingled with the skies still wilt thou dream on future joy and woe regard and weigh yon dust before it flies that little urn saith more than thousand homilies five or burst the vanished hero's lofty mound far on the solitary shore he sleeps he fell and falling nations mourned around but now not one of saddening thousands weeps nor warlike worshipper his vigil keeps where demi-gods appeared as records tell remove yon skull from out the scattered heaps is that a temple where a god may dwell why e'en the worm at last disdains her shattered cell six look on its broken arch its ruined wall its chambers desolate and portals foul yes this was once ambition's airy hall the dome of thought the palace of the soul behold through each lack-lustre eyeless hole the gay recess of wisdom and of wit and passion's host that never brooked control can all saint sage or sophist ever writ people this lonely tower this tenement refit seven well didst thou speak athena's wisest son all that we know is nothing can be known why should we shrink from what we cannot shun each hath its pang but feeble sufferers groan with brain-born dreams of evil all their own pursue what chance or fate proclaimeth best peace waits us on the shores of acheron there no forced banquet claims the sated guest but silence spreads the couch of ever welcome rest eight yet if as holiest men have deemed there be a land of souls beyond that sable shore to shame the doctrine of the sadducee and sophists madly vain of dubious law how sweet it were in concert to adore with those who made our mortal labours light to hear each voice we feared to hear no more behold each mighty shade revealed to sight the bactrian samian sage and all who taught the right nine there thou whose love and life together fled have left me here to love and live in vain twined with my heart and can i deem thee dead when busy memory flashes on my brain well i will dream that we may meet again and woo the vision to my vacant breast if aught of young remembrance then remain be as it may futurity's behest for me twere bliss enough to know thy spirit blessed ten here let me sit upon this mossy stone the marble columns yet unshaken base here son of saturn was thy favourite throne mightiest of many such hence let me trace the latent grandeur of thy dwelling place it may not be nor even can fancy's eye restore what time hath laboured to deface yet these proud pillars claim no passing sigh unmoved the moslem sits the light greek carols by eleven but who of all the plunderers of yon fane on high where pallas lingered loath to flee the latest relic of her ancient reign the last the worst dull spoiler who was he blush caledonia such thy son could be england i joy no child he was of thine thy free-born men should spare what once was free yet they could violate each saddening shrine and bear these altars o'er the long reluctant brine twelve but most the modern picts ignoble boast to rive what goth and turk and time hath spared cold as the crags upon his native coast his mind as barren and his heart as hard is he whose head conceived whose hand prepared ought to displace athena's poor remains her sons too weak the sacred shrine to guard yet felt some portion of their mother's pains and never knew till then the weight of despot's chains thirteen what shall it e'er be said by british tongue albion was happy in athena's tears though in thy name the slaves her bosom wrung tell not the deed to blushing europe's ears the ocean queen the free britannia bears the last poor plunder from a bleeding land yes she whose generous aid her name endears tore down those remnants with a harpy's hand which envious eld forbore and tyrants left to stand fourteen where was thine aegis palace that appalled stern alaric and havoc on their way where peleus's son whom hell in vain enthralled his shade from hades upon that dread day bursting to light in terrible array 
what could not pluto spare the chief once more to scare a second robber from his prey idly he wandered on the stygian shore nor now preserved the walls he loved to shield before fifteen cold is the heart fair greece that looks on thee nor feels as lovers o'er the dust they loved dull is the eye that will not weep to see thy walls defaced thy mouldering shrines removed by british hands which it had best behoved to guard those relics ne'er to be restored cursed be the hour when from their isle they roved and once again thy hapless bosom gored and snatched thy shrinking gods to northern climes aboard sixteen but where is harold shall i then forget to urge the gloomy wanderer o'er the wave little recked he of all that men regret no loved one now in feigned lament could rave no friend the parting hand extended gave ere the cold stranger passed to other climes hard is his heart whom charms may not enslave but harold felt not as in other times and left without a sigh the land of war and crimes seventeen he that has sailed upon the dark blue sea has viewed at times i ween a full fair sight when the fresh breeze is fair as breeze may be the white sails set the gallant frigate tight masts spires and strand retiring to the right the glorious main expanding o'er the bow the convoy spread like wild swans in their flight the dullest sailor wearing bravely now so gaily curl the waves before each dashing prow eighteen and oh the little warlike world within the well-reeved guns the netted canopy the hoarse command the busy humming din when at a word the tops are manned on high hark to the boatswain's call the cheering cry while through the seaman's hand the tackle glides or schoolboy midshipman that standing by strains his shrill pipe as good or ill betides and well the docile crew that skilful urchin guides nineteen white is the glassy deck without a stain where on the watch the staid lieutenant walks look on that part which sacred doth remain for the lone chieftain who majestic stalks silent and feared by all not oft he talks with aught beneath him if he would preserve that strict restraint which broken ever balks conquest and fame but britons rarely swerve from law however stern which tends their strength to nerve twenty blow swiftly blow thou keel compelling gale till the broad sun withdraws his lessening ray then must the pennant bear a slacken sail that lagging barks may make their lazy way ah grievance sore and listless dull delay to waste on sluggish hulks the sweetest breeze what leagues are lost before the dawn of day thus loitering pensive on the willing seas the flapping sails hauled down to halt for logs like these twenty one the moon is up by heaven a lovely eve long streams of light o'er dancing waves expand now lads on shore may sigh and maids believe such be our fate when we return to land meantime some rude arian's restless hand wakes the brisk harmony that sailors love a circle there of merry listeners stand or to some well-known measure featly move thoughtless as if on shore they still were free to rove twenty two through calpe's straits survey the steepy shore europe and Afric on each other gaze lands of the dark-eyed maid and dusky moor alike beheld beneath pale hecate's blaze how softly on the spanish shore she plays disclosing rock and slope and forest brown distinct though darkening with her waning phase but mauritania's giant shadows frown from mountain cliff to coast descending sombre down twenty three tis night when meditation bids us feel we once have loved though love is at an end the heart lone mourner of its baffled zeal though friendless now will dream it had a friend who with the weight of years would wish to bend when youth itself survives young love and joy alas when mingling souls forget to blend death hath but little left him to destroy ah happy years once more who would not be a boy twenty four thus bending o'er the vessel's laving side to gaze on diane's wave reflected sphere the soul forgets her schemes of hope and pride and flies unconscious o'er each backward year none are so desolate but something dear dearer than self possesses or possessed a thought and claims the homage of a tear 
a flashing pang of which the weary breast would still albeit in vain the heavy heart divest twenty five to sit on rocks to muse o'er flood and fell to slowly trace the forest's shady scene where things that own not man's dominion dwell and mortal foot hath ne'er or rarely been to climb the trackless mountain all unseen with the wild flock that never needs a fold alone o'er steeps and foaming falls to lean this is not solitude tis but to hold converse with nature's charms and view her stores unrolled twenty six but midst the crowd the hum the shock of men to hear to see to feel and to possess and roam along the world's tired denizen with none who bless us none whom we can bless minions of splendour shrinking from distress none that with kindred consciousness endued if we were not would seem to smile the less of all that flattered followed sought and sued this is to be alone this this is solitude twenty seven more blessed the life of godly eremite such as on lonely athos may be seen watching at eve upon the giant height which looks o'er waves so blue skies so serene that he who there at such an hour hath been will wistful linger on that hallowed spot then slowly tear him from the witching scene sigh forth one wish that such had been his lot then turn to hate a world he had almost forgot twenty eight pass we the long unvarying course the track oft trod that never leaves a trace behind pass we the calm the gale the change the tack and each well-known caprice of wave and wind pass we the joys and sorrows sailors find cooped in their winged sea-girt citadel the foul the fair the contrary the kind as breezes rise and fall and billows swell till on some jocund morn lo land and all is well Twenty nine but not in silence pass calypso's isles the sister tenants of the middle deep there for the weary still a haven smiles though the fair goddess long has ceased to weep and o'er her cliffs a fruitless watch to keep for him who dared prefer a mortal bride here too his boy essayed the dreadful leap stern mentor urged from high to yonder tide while thus of both bereft the nymph queen doubly sighed Thirty her reign is past her gentle glory's gone but trust not this to easy youth beware a mortal sovereign holds her dangerous throne and thou mayst find a new calypso there sweet florence could another ever share this wayward loveless heart it would be thine but checked by every tie i may not dare to cast a worthless offering at thy shrine nor ask so dear a breast to feel one pang for mine thirty one thus harold deemed as on that lady's eye he looked and met its beam without a thought save admiration glancing harmless by love kept aloof albeit not far remote who knew his votary often lost and caught but knew him as his worshipper no more and ne'er again the boy his bosom sought since now he vainly urged him to adore well deemed the little god his ancient sway was o'er thirty two fair florence found in sooth with some amaze one who twas said still sighed to all he saw withstand unmoved the lustre of her gaze which others hailed with real or mimic awe their hope their doom their punishment their law all that gay beauty from her bondsman claims and much she marvelled that a youth so raw nor felt nor feigned at least the oft-told flames which though sometimes they frown yet rarely anger dames thirty three little knew she that seeming marble heart now masked by silence or withheld by pride was not unskilful in the spoiler's art and spread its snares licentious far and wide nor from the base pursuit had turned aside as long as aught was worthy to pursue but harold on such arts no more relied and had he doted on those eyes so blue yet never would he join the lover's whining crew thirty four not much he kens i ween of woman's breast who thinks that wanton thing is won by sighs what careth she for hearts when once possessed do proper homage to thine idol's eyes but not too humbly or she will despise thee and thy suit though told in moving tropes disguise e'en tenderness if thou art wise brisk confidence still best with woman copes pique her and soothe in turn soon passion crowns thy hopes thirty five tis an old lesson 
time approves it true and those who know it best deplore it most when all is won that all desire to woo the paltry prize is hardly worth the cost youth wasted minds degraded honour lost these are thy fruits successful passion these if kindly cruel early hope is crossed still to the last it rankles a disease not to be cured when love itself forgets to please thirty six away nor let me loiter in my song for we have many a mountain path to tread and many a varied shore to sail along by pensive sadness not by fiction led climes fair withal as ever mortal head imagined in its little schemes of thought or e'er in new utopias were read to teach man what he might be or he ought if that corrupted thing could ever such be taught thirty seven dear nature is the kindest mother still though always changing in her aspect mild from her bare bosom let me take my fill her never weaned though not her favoured child oh she is fairest in her features wild where nothing polished dares pollute her path to me by day or night she ever smiled though i have marked her when none other hath and sought her more and more and loved her best in wrath thirty eight land of albania where iskander rose theme of the young and beacon of the wise and he his namesake whose oft baffled foes shrunk from his deeds of chivalrous emprise land of albania let me bend mine eyes on thee thou rugged nurse of savage men the cross descends thy minarets arise and the pale crescent sparkles in the glen through many a cypress grove within each city's ken thirty nine child harold sailed and passed the barren spot where sad penelope o'erlooked the wave and onward viewed the mount not yet forgot the lover's refuge and the lesbian's grave dark sappho could not verse immortal save that breast imbued with such immortal fire could she not live who life eternal gave if life eternal may await the lyre that only heaven to which earth's children may aspire forty was on a grecian autumn's gentle eve child harold hailed lucadia's cape afar a spot he longed to see nor cared to leave oft did he mark the scenes of vanished war actium lepanto fatal trafalgar mark them unmoved for he would not delight born beneath some remote inglorious star in themes of bloody fray or gallant fight but loathed the bravo's trade and laughed at martial white forty one but when he saw the evening star above lucadia's far projecting rock of woe and hailed the last resort of fruitless love he felt or deemed he felt no common glow and as the stately vessel glided slow beneath the shadow of that ancient mount he watched the billows melancholy flow and sunk albeit in thought as he was wont more placid seemed his eye and smooth his pallid front forty two morn dawns and with its stern albania's hills dark suli's rocks and pindus's inland peak robed half in mist bedewed with snowy rills arrayed in many a dun and purple streak arise and as the clouds along them break disclose the dwelling of the mountaineer here roams the wolf the eagle whets his beak birds beasts of prey and wilder men appear and gathering storms around convulse the closing year forty three now harold felt himself at length alone and bade to christian tongues a long adieu now he had ventured on a shore unknown which all admire but many dread to view his breast was armed against fate his wants were few peril he sought not but ne'er shrank to meet the scene was savage but the scene was new this made the ceaseless toil of travel sweet beat back keen winter's blast and welcomed summer's heat forty four here the red cross for still the cross is here though sadly scoffed at by the circumcised forgets that pride to pampered priesthood dear churchmen and votary alike despised foul superstition howsoe'er disguised idol saint virgin prophet crescent cross for whatsoever symbol thou art prized thou sacerdotal gain but general loss who from true worship's gold can separate thy dross forty five ambrasia's gulf behold where once was lost a world for woman lovely harmless thing in yonder rippling bay their naval host did many a roman chief and asian king to doubtful conflict certain slaughter bring look where the second caesar's trophies rose now like the hands that reared them withering 
imperial anarchs doubling human woes god was thy globe ordained for such to win and lose forty six from the dark barriers of that rugged clime e'en to the centre of illyria's vales child harold passed o'er many a mount sublime through lands scarce noticed in historic tales yet in famed attica such lovely dales are rarely seen nor can fair tempe boast a charm they know not loved parnassus fails though classic ground and consecrated most to match some spots that lurk within this lowering coast forty seven he passed bleak pindus acherusia's lake and left the primal city of the land and onwards did his further journey take to greet albania's chief whose dread command is lawless law for with a bloody hand he sways a nation turbulent and bold yet here and there some daring mountain band disdain his power and from their rocky hold hurl their defiance far nor yield unless to gold forty eight monastic zitza from thy shady brow thou small but favoured spot of holy ground where'er we gaze around above below what rainbow tints what magic charms are found rock river forest mountain all abound and bluest skies that harmonize the whole beneath the distant torrent's rushing sound tells where the volumed cataract doth roll between those hanging rocks that shock yet please the soul forty nine amidst the grove that crowns yon tufted hill which were it not for many a mountain nigh rising in lofty ranks and loftier still might well itself be deemed of dignity the convent's white walls glisten fair on high here dwells the caloyer nor rude is he nor niggard of his cheer the passer-by is welcome still nor heedless will he flee from hence if he delight kind nature's sheen to see fifty here in the sultriest season let him rest fresh is the green beneath those aged trees here winds of gentlest wing will fan his breast from heaven itself he may inhale the breeze the plain is far beneath oh let him seize pure pleasure while he can the scorching ray here pierceth not impregnate with disease then let his length the loitering pilgrim lay and gaze untired the morn the noon the eve away fifty one dusky and huge enlarging on the site nature's volcanic amphitheatre chimera's alps extend from left to right beneath a living valley seems to stir flocks play trees wave streams flow the mountain fir nodding above behold black acheron once consecrated to the sepulchre pluto if this be hell i look upon close shamed elysium's gates my shade shall seek for none fifty two no city's towers pollute the lovely view unseen is yanina though not remote veiled by the screen of hills here men are few scanty the hamlet rare the lonely cot but peering down each precipice the goat browseth and pensive o'er his scattered flock the little shepherd in his white capote doth lean his boyish form along the rock or in his cave awaits the tempest's short-lived shock fifty three o oh, where dodona is thine aged grove prophetic fount and oracle divine what valley echoed the response of jove what trace remaineth of the thunderer's shrine all all forgotten and shall man repine that his frail bonds to fleeting life are broke cease fool the fate of gods may well be thine wouldst thou survive the marble or the oak when nations tongues and worlds must sink beneath the stroke fifty four epirus's bounds recede and mountains fail tired of upgazing still the wearied eye reposes gladly on as smooth a veil as ever springy clad in grassy dye e'en on a plain no humble beauties lie where some bold river breaks the long expanse and woods along the banks are waving high whose shadows in the glassy waters dance or with the moonbeam sleep in midnight's solemn trance fifty five the sun had sunk behind vast tomerit the laos wide and fierce came roaring by the shades of wonted night were gathering yet when down the steep banks winding wearily child harold saw like meteors in the sky the glittering minarets of tepalin whose walls o'erlook the stream and drawing nigh he heard the busy hum of warrior men swelling the breeze that sighed along the lengthening glen fifty six 
he passed the sacred harem's silent tower and underneath the wide o'er-arching gate surveyed the dwelling of this chief of power where all around proclaimed his high estate amidst no common pomp the despot sat while busy preparation shook the court slaves eunuchs soldiers guests and santons wait within a palace and without a fort here men of every clime appear to make resort fifty seven richly caparisoned a ready row of armoured horse and many a warlike store circled the wide extending court below above strange groups adorned the corridor and oft times through the area's echoing door some high-capped tartar spurred his steed away the turk the greek the albanian and the moor here mingled in their many-hued array while the deep war-drum sound announced the close of day fifty eight the wild albanian kirtled to his knee with shawl girt head and ornamented gun and gold embroidered garments fair to see the crimson scarfed men of macedon the delhi with his cap of terror on and crooked glaive the lively supple greek and swarthy nubia's mutilated son the bearded turk that rarely deigns to speak master of all around too potent to be meek fifty nine are mixed conspicuous some recline in groups scanning the motley scene that varies round there some grave moslem to devotion stoops and some that smoke and some that play are found here the albanian proudly treads the ground half whispering there the greek is heard to prate hark from the mosque the nightly solemn sound the muezzin's call doth shake the minaret there is no god but god to prayer lo god is great sixty just at this season ramazani's fast through the long day its penance did maintain but when the lingering twilight hour was past revel and feast assumed the rule again now all was bustle and the menial train prepared and spread the plenteous board within the vacant gallery now seemed made in vain but from the chambers came the mingling din as page and slave anon were passing out and in sixty one here woman's voice is never heard apart and scarce permitted guarded veiled to move she yields to one her person and her heart tamed to her cage nor feels a wish to rove for not unhappy in her master's love and joyful in a mother's gentlest cares blessed cares all other feelings far above herself more sweetly rears the babe she bears who never quits the breast no meaner passion shares sixty two in marble paved pavilion where a spring of living water from the centre rose whose bubbling did a genial freshness fling and soft voluptuous couches breathed repose ali reclined a man of war and woes yet in his lineaments ye cannot trace while gentleness her milder radiance throws along that aged venerable face the deeds that lurk beneath and stain him with disgrace sixty three it is not that yon hoary lengthening beard ill suits the passions which belong to youth love conquers age so hafiz hath averred so sings the teyan and he sings in sooth but crimes that scorn the tender voice of ruth beseeming all men ill but most the man in years have marked him with a tiger's tooth blood follows blood and through their mortal span in bloodier acts conclude those who with blood began sixty four mid many things most new to ear and eye the pilgrim rested here his weary feet and gazed around on moslem luxury till quickly wearied with that spacious seat of wealth and wantonness the choice retreat of sated grandeur from the city's noise and were it humbler it in sooth were sweet but peace abhorreth artificial joys and pleasure leagued with pomp the zest of both destroys sixty five fierce are albania's children yet they lack not virtues were those virtues more mature where is the foe that ever saw their back who can so well the toil of war endure their native fastnesses not more secure than they in doubtful time of troublous need their wrath how deadly but their friendship sure when gratitude or valour bids them bleed unshaken rushing on where'er their chief may lead sixty six child harold saw them in their chieftain's tower thronging to war in splendour and success and after viewed them when within their power himself awhile the victim of distress 
that saddening hour when bad men hotlier press but these did shelter him beneath their roof when less barbarians would have cheered him less and fellow countrymen have stood aloof in aught that tries the heart how few withstand the proof sixty seven it chanced that adverse winds once drove his bark full on the coast of suli's shaggy shore when all around was desolate and dark to land was perilous to sojourn more yet for a while the mariners forbore dubious to trust where treachery might lurk at length they ventured forth though doubting sore that those who loathe alike the frank and turk might once again renew their ancient butcher work sixty eight vain fear the suliotes stretched the welcome hand led them o'er rocks and past the dangerous swamp kinder than polished slaves though not so bland and piled the hearth and wrung their garments damp and filled the bowl and trimmed the cheerful lamp and spread their fare though homely all they had such conduct bears philanthropy's rare stamp to rest the weary and to soothe the sad doth lessen happier men and shames at least the bad sixty nine it came to pass that when he did address himself to quit at length this mountain land combined marauders halfway barred egress and wasted far and near with glaive and brand and therefore did he take a trusty band to traverse arcanania forest wide in war well seasoned and with labours tanned till he did greet white achelous's tide and from his farther bank Aetolia's wolds espied. 70. Where lone Utrechi forms its circling cove, and weary waves retire to gleam at rest, how brown the foliage of the green hill's grove, nodding at midnight o'er the calm bay's breast, as winds come whispering lightly from the west, kissing not ruffling the blue deeps serene. Here Harold was received a welcome guest, nor did he pass unmoved the gentle scene for many a joy could he from night's soft presence glean seventy one on the smooth shore the night fires brightly blazed the feast was done the red wine circling fast and he that unawares had there he gazed with gaping wonderment had stared aghast for ere night's midmost stillest hour was past the native revels of the troop began each palikar his sabre from him cast and bounding hand in hand man linked to man yelling their uncouth dirge long danced the kirtled clan seventy two child harold at a little distance stood and viewed but not displeased the revelry nor hated harmless mirth however rude in sooth it was no vulgar sight to see their barbarous yet their not indecent glee and as the flames along their faces gleamed their gestures nimble dark eyes flashing free the long wild locks that to their girdles streamed while thus in concert they this lay half sang half screamed tamburji tamburji thy larum afar gives hope to the valiant and promise of war all the sons of the mountains arise at the note chimariot illyrian and dark suliot oh who is more brave than a dark suliot to his snowy camise and his shaggy capote to the wolf and the vulture he leaves his wild flock and descends to the plain like the stream from the rock shall the sons of chimari who never forgive the fault of a friend bid an enemy live let those guns so unerring such vengeance forego what mark is so fair as the breast of a foe macedonia sends forth her invincible race for a time they abandon the cave and the chase but those scarves of blood red shall be redder before the sabre is sheathed and the battle is o'er then the pirates of parga that dwell by the waves and teach the pale franks what it is to be slaves shall leave on the beach the long galley and oar and track to his covert the captive on shore i ask not the pleasure that riches supply my sabre shall win what the feeble must buy shall win the young bride with her long flowing hair and many a maid from her mother shall tear i love the fair face of the maid in her youth her caresses shall lull me her music shall soothe let her bring from her chamber the many-toned lyre and sing us a song on the fall of her sire remember the moment when previsa fell the shrieks of the conquered the conqueror's yell the roofs that we fired and the plunder we shared the wealthy we slaughtered the lovely we spared 
i talk not of mercy i talk not of fear he neither must know who would serve the vizier since the days of our prophet the crescent ne'er saw a chief ever glorious like ali pasha dark mukhtar his son to the danube is sped let the yellow-haired jaws view his horse-tail with dread when his delis come dashing in blood o'er the banks how few shall escape from the muscovite ranks selictar unsheath then our chief scimitar tamburji thy larum gives promise of war ye mountains that see us descend to the shore shall view us as victors or view us no more seventy three fair greece sad relic of departed worth immortal though no more though fallen great who now shall lead thy scattered children forth and long accustomed bondage uncreate not such thy sons who whilom did await the hopeless warriors of a willing doom in bleak thermopylae's sepulchral strait o oh, who that gallant spirit shall resume leap from eurotas's banks and call thee from the tomb seventy four spirit of freedom when on phyle's brow thou satst with thrasybulus and his train couldst thou forebode the dismal hour which now dims the green beauties of thine attic plain not thirty tyrants now enforce the chain but every carl can lord it o'er thy land nor rise thy sons but idly rail in vain trembling beneath the scourge of turkish hand from birth till death enslaved in word in deed unmanned seventy five in all save form alone how changed and who that marks the fire still sparkling in each eye who would but deem their bosom burned anew with thy unquenched beam lost liberty and many dream with all the hour is nigh that gives them back their father's heritage for foreign arms and aid they fondly sigh nor solely dare encounter hostile rage or tear their name defiled from slavery's mournful page seventy six hereditary bondsmen know ye not who would be free themselves must strike the blow by their right arms the conquest must be wrought will gaul or muscovite redress ye no true they may lay your proud despoilers low but not for you will freedom's altars flame shades of the helots triumph for your foe greece change thy lords thy state is still the same thy glorious day is o'er but not thy years of shame seventy seven the city won for allah from the Giaur, the Giaur from otman's race again may rest and the serai's impenetrable tower receive the fiery frank her former guest or wahab's rebel brood who dared divest the prophet's tomb of all its pious spoil may wind their path of blood along the west but ne'er will freedom seek this fated soil but slave succeed to slave through years of endless toil seventy eight yet mark their mirth ere lenten days begin that penance which their holy rites prepare to shrive from man his weight of mortal sin by daily abstinence and nightly prayer but ere his sackcloth garb repentance wear some days of joyance are decreed to all to take of pleasance each his secret share in motley robe to dance at masking ball and join the mimic train of merry carnival seventy nine and who's more rife with merriment than thine o stambul once the empress of their reign though turbans now pollute sophia's shrine and greece her very altar's eyes in vain alas her woes will still pervade my strain gay were her minstrels once for free her throng all felt the common joy they now must feign nor oft i've seen such sight nor heard such song as wooed the eye and thrilled the bosphorus along eighty loud was the lightsome tumult on the shore oft music changed but never ceased her tone and timely echoed back the measured oar and rippling waters made a pleasant moan the queen of tides on high consenting shone and when a transient breeze swept o'er the wave twas as if darting from her heavenly throne a brighter glance her form reflected gave till sparkling billows seemed to light the banks they lave eighty one glanced many a light caique along the foam danced on the shore the daughters of the land no thought had man or maid of rest or home while many a languid eye and thrilling hand exchanged the look few bosoms may withstand or gently pressed returned the pressure still 
o love young love bound in thy rosy band let sage or cynic prattle as he will these hours and only these redeemed life's years of ill eighty two but midst the throng in merry masquerade lurk there no hearts that throb with secret pain e'en through the closest searment half betrayed to such the gentle murmurs of the main seem to re-echo all they mourn in vain to such the gladness of the gamesome crowd is source of wayward thought and stern disdain how do they loathe the laughter idly loud and long to change the robe of revel for the shroud eighty three this must he feel the true-born son of greece if greece one true-born patriot can boast not such as prate of war but skulk in peace the bondsman's peace who sighs for all he lost yet with smooth smile his tyrant can accost and wield the slavish sickle not the sword ah greece they love thee least who owe thee most their birth their blood and that sublime record of hero sires who shame thy now degenerate horde eighty four when riseth lacedaemon's hardihood when thebes epaminondas rears again when athens children are with hearts endued when grecian mothers shall give birth to men then mayst thou be restored but not till then a thousand years scarce serve to form a state an hour may lay it in the dust and when can man its shattered splendour renovate recall its virtues back and vanquish time and fate eighty five and yet how lovely in thine age of woe land of lost gods and godlike men art thou thy vales of evergreen thy hills of snow proclaim thee nature's varied favourite now thy fanes thy temples to the surface bow commingling slowly with heroic earth broke by the share of every rustic plough so perish monuments of mortal birth so perish all in turn save well-recorded worth eighty six save where some solitary column mourns above its prostrate brethren of the cave save where tritonia's airy shrine adorns colonna's cliff and gleams along the wave save o'er some warrior's half-forgotten grave where the grey stones and unmolested grass ages but not oblivion feebly brave while strangers only not regardless pass lingering like me perchance to gaze and sigh alas eighty seven yet are thy skies as blue thy crags as wild sweet are thy groves and verdant are thy fields thine olives ripe as when minerva smiled and still his honeyed wealth hymettus yields there the blithe bee his fragrant fortress builds the free-born wanderer of thy mountain air apollo still thy long long summer gilds still in his beam mendeli's marbles glare art glory freedom fail but nature still is fair eighty eight where'er we tread tis haunted holy ground no earth of thine is lost in vulgar mould but one vast realm of wonder spreads around and all the muses tales seem truly told till the sense aches with gazing to behold the scenes our earliest dreams have dwelt upon each hill and dale each deepening glen and wold defies the power which crushed thy temples gone age shakes athena's tower but spares grey marathon eighty nine the sun the soil but not the slave the same unchanged in all except its foreign lord preserves alike its bounds and boundless fame the battlefield where persia's victim horde first bowed beneath the brunt of hellas's sword as on the morn to distant glory dear when marathon became a magic word which uttered to the hearer's eye appear the camp the host the fight the conqueror's career ninety the flying mead his shaftless broken bow the fiery greek his red pursuing spear mountains above earth's ocean's plain below death in the front destruction in the rear such was the scene what now remaineth here what sacred trophy marks the hallowed ground recording freedom's smile and asia's tear the rifled urn the violated mound the dust thy courser's hoof rude stranger spurns around ninety one yet to the remnants of thy splendour past shall pilgrims pensive but unwearied throng long shall the voyager with thy ionian blast hail the bright clime of battle and of song long shall thine annals and immortal tongue fill with thy fame the youth of many a shore 
boast of the aged lesson of the young which sages venerate and bards adore as pallas and the muse unveil their awful lore ninety two the parted bosom clings to wonted home if aught that's kindred cheer the welcome hearth he that is lonely hither let him roam and gaze complacent on congenial earth greece is no lightsome land of social mirth but he whom sadness soothe'th may abide and scarce regret the region of his birth when wandering slow by delphi's sacred side or gazing o'er the plains where greek and persian died ninety three let such approach this consecrated land and pass in peace along the magic waste but spare its relics let no busy hand deface the scenes already how defaced not for such purpose were these altars placed revere the remnants nations once revered so may our country's name be undisgraced so mayst thou prosper where thy youth was reared by every honest joy of love and life endeared ninety four for thee who thus in too protracted song hath soothed thine idless with inglorious lays soon shall thy voice be lost amid the throng of louder minstrels in these later days to such resign the strife for fading bays ill may such contest now the spirit move which heeds nor keen reproach nor partial praise since cold each kinder heart that might approve and none are left to please where none are left to love ninety five thou too art gone thou loved and lovely one whom youth and youth's affections bound to me who did for me what none beside have done nor shrank from one albeit unworthy thee what is my being thou hast ceased to be nor stayed to welcome here thy wanderer home who mourns o'er hours which we no more shall see would they had never been or were to come would he had ne'er returned to find fresh cause to roam ninety six o oh, ever loving lovely and beloved how selfish sorrow ponders on the past and clings to thoughts now better far removed but time shall tear thy shadow from me last all thou couldst have of mine stern death thou hast the parent friend and now the more than friend ne'er yet for one thine arrows flew so fast and grief with grief continuing still to blend hath snatched the little joy that life had yet to lend ninety seven then must i plunge again into the crowd and follow all that peace disdains to seek where revel calls and laughter vainly loud false to the heart distorts the hollow cheek to leave the flagging spirit doubly weak still o'er the features which perforce they cheer to feign the pleasure or conceal the peak smiles form the channel of a future tear or raise the writhing lip with ill-dissembled sneer ninety eight what is the worst of woes that wait on age what stamps the wrinkle deeper on the brow to view each loved one blotted from life's page and be alone on earth as i am now before the chastener humbly let me bow o'er hearts divided and o'er hopes destroyed roll on vain days full reckless may ye flow since time hath reft whate'er my soul enjoyed and with the ills of eld mine earlier years alloyed End of Canto the Second Section three of Child Harold's Pilgrimage by George Gordon Lord Byron. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Canto the Third One Is thy face like thy mother's, my fair child? Ada sole daughter of my house and heart when last i saw thy young blue eyes they smiled and then we parted not as now we part but with a hope awaking with a start the waters heave around me and on high the winds lift up their voices i depart whither i know not but the hours gone by when albion's lessening shores could grieve or glad mine eye two once more upon the waters yet once more and the waves bound beneath me as a steed that knows his rider welcome to their roar swift be their guidance wheresoe'er it lead though the strained mast should quiver as a reed and the rent canvas fluttering strew the gale still must i on for i am as a weed 
flung from the rock on ocean's foam to sail where'er the surge may sweep the tempest's breath prevail three in my youth's summer i did sing of one the wandering outlaw of his own dark mind again i seize the theme then but begun and bear it with me as the rushing wind bears the cloud onwards in that tale i find the furrows of long thought and dried up tears which ebbing leave a sterile track behind or which all heavily the journeying years plod the last sands of life where not a flower appears four since my young days of passion joy or pain perchance my heart and harp have lost a string and both may jar it may be that in vain i would essay as i have sung to sing yet though a dreary strain to this i cling so that it wean me from the weary dream of selfish grief or gladness so it fling forgetfulness around me it shall seem to me though to none else a not ungrateful theme five he who grown aged in this world of woe in deeds not years piercing the depths of life so that no wonder waits him nor below can love or sorrow fame ambition strife cut to his heart again with the keen knife of silent sharp endurance he can tell why thought seeks refuge in lone caves yet rife with airy images and shapes which dwell still unimpaired though old in the soul's haunted cell six tis to create and in creating live a being more intense that we endow with form our fancy gaining as we give the life we image even as i do now what am i nothing but not so art thou soul of my thought with whom i traverse earth invisible but gazing as i glow mixed with thy spirit blended with thy birth and feeling still with thee in my crushed feelings dearth seven yet must i think less wildly i have thought too long and darkly till my brain became in its own eddy boiling and o'erwrought a whirling gulf of fantasy and flame and thus untaught in youth my heart to tame my springs of life were poisoned tis too late yet am i changed though still enough the same in strength to bear what time cannot abate and feed on bitter fruits without accusing fate eight something too much of this but now tis past and the spell closes with its silent seal long absent harold reappears at last he of the breast which fain no more would feel wrung with the wounds which kill not but ne'er heal yet time who changes all had altered him in soul and aspect as in age years steal fire from the mind as vigour from the limb and life's enchanted cup but sparkles near the brim nine his had been quaffed too quickly and he found the dregs were wormwood but he filled again and from a purer fount on holier ground and deemed its spring perpetual but in vain still round him clung invisibly a chain which galled forever fettering though unseen and heavy though it clanked not worn with pain which pined although it spoke not and grew keen entering with every step he took through many a scene Ten. secure in guarded coldness he had mixed again in fancied safety with his kind and deemed his spirit now so firmly fixed and sheathed with an invulnerable mind that if no joy no sorrow lurked behind and he as one might midst the many stand unheeded searching through the crowd to find fit speculation such as in strange land he found in wonder-works of god and nature's hand eleven but who can view the ripened rose nor seek to wear it who can curiously behold the smoothness and the sheen of beauty's cheek nor feel the heart can never all grow old who can contemplate fame through clouds unfold the star which rises o'er her steep nor climb harold once more within the vortex rolled on with the giddy circle chasing time yet with a nobler aim than in his youth's fond prime Twelve but soon he knew himself the most unfit of men to herd with man 
with whom he held little in common untaught to submit his thoughts to others though his soul was quelled in youth by his own thoughts still uncompelled he would not yield dominion of his mind to spirits against whom his own rebelled proud though in desolation which could find a life within itself to breathe without mankind thirteen where rose the mountains there to him were friends where rolled the ocean thereon was his home where a blue sky and glowing clime extends he had the passion and the power to roam the desert forest cavern breakers foam were unto him companionship they spake a mutual language clearer than the tome of his land's tongue which he would oft forsake for nature's pages glassed by sunbeams on the lake fourteen like the chaldean he could watch the stars till he had peopled them with beings bright as their own beams and earth and earth-born jars and human frailties were forgotten quite could he have kept his spirit to that flight he had been happy but this clay will sink its spark immortal envying it the light to which it mounts as if to break the link that keeps us from yon heaven which woos us to its brink fifteen but in man's dwellings he became a thing restless and worn and stern and wearisome drooped as a wild-born falcon with clipped wing to whom the boundless air alone were home then came his fit again which to o'ercome as eagerly the barred-up bird will beat his breast and beak against his wiry dome till the blood tinge his plumage so the heat of his impeded soul would through his bosom eat sixteen self-exiled harold wanders forth again with naught of hope left but with less of gloom the very knowledge that he lived in vain that all was over on this side the tomb had made despair a smilingness assume which though twere wild as on the plundered wreck when mariners would madly meet their doom with draughts intemperate on the sinking deck did yet inspire a cheer which he forbore to check seventeen stop for thy tread is on an empire's dust an earthquake's spoil is sepulchred below is the spot marked with no colossal bust nor column trophied for triumphal show none but the moral's truth tells simpler so as the ground was before thus let it be how that red rain hath made the harvest grow and is this all the world has gained by thee thou first and last of fields king-making victory eighteen and harold stands upon this place of skulls the grave of france the deadly waterloo how in an hour the power which gave annuls its gifts transferring fame as fleeting too in pride of place here last the eagle flew then tore with bloody talon the rent plain pierced by the shaft of banded nations through ambition's life and labours all were vain he wears the shattered links of the world's broken chain nineteen fit retribution gaul may champ the bit and foam in fetters but is earth more free did nations combat to make one submit or league to teach all kings true sovereignty what shall reviving thraldom again be the patched-up idol of enlightened days shall we who struck the lion down shall we pay the wolf homage proffering lowly gaze and servile knees to thrones no prove before ye praise twenty if not or one fallen despot boast no more in vain fair cheeks were furrowed with hot tears for europe's flowers long rooted up before the trampler of her vineyards in vain years of death depopulation bondage fears have all been borne and broken by the accord of roused up millions all that most endears glory is when the myrtle wreathes a sword such as harmodius drew on athens tyrant lord twenty one there was a sound of revelry by night and belgium's capital had gathered then her beauty and her chivalry and bright the lamps shone o'er fair women and brave men a thousand hearts beat happily and when music arose with its voluptuous swell soft eyes looked love to eyes which spake again and all went merry as a marriage bell but hush hark a deep sound strikes like a rising knell twenty two did ye not hear it no twas but the wind or the car rattling o'er the stony street 
on with the dance let joy be unconfined no sleep till morn when youth and pleasure meet to chase the glowing hours with flying feet but hark that heavy sound breaks in once more as if the clouds its echo would repeat and nearer clearer deadlier than before arm arm it is it is the cannon's opening roar twenty three within a windowed niche of that high hall sat brunswick's fated chieftain he did hear that sound the first amidst the festival and caught its tone with death's prophetic ear and when they smiled because he deemed it near his heart more truly knew that peal too well which stretched his father on a bloody bier and roused the vengeance blood alone could quell he rushed into the field and foremost fighting fell twenty four ah then and there was hurrying to and fro and gathering tears and tremblings of distress and cheeks all pale which but an hour ago blushed at the praise of their own loveliness and there were sudden partings such as press the life from out young hearts and choking sighs which ne'er might be repeated who would guess if ever more should meet those mutual eyes since upon night so sweet such awful morn could rise twenty five and there was mounting in hot haste the steed the mustering squadron and the clattering car went pouring forward with impetuous speed and swiftly forming in the ranks of war and the deep thunder peal on peal afar and near the beat of the alarming drum roused up the soldier ere the morning star while thronged the citizens with terror dumb or whispering with white lips the foe they come they come twenty six and wild and high the cameron's gathering rose the war note of lochiel which albin's hills have heard and heard too have her saxon foes how in the noon of night that pibroch thrills savage and shrill but with the breath which fills their mountain pipe so fill the mountaineers with the fierce native daring which instills the stirring memory of a thousand years and evans donald's fame rings in each clansman's ears twenty seven and ardenne waves above them her green leaves dewy with nature's teardrops as they pass grieving if aught inanimate air grieves or the unreturning brave alas ere evening to be trodden like the grass which now beneath them but above shall grow in its next verdure when this fiery mass of living valour rolling on the foe and burning with high hope shall moulder cold and low twenty eight last noon beheld them full of lusty life last eve in beauty's circle proudly gay the midnight brought the signal sound of strife the morn the marshalling in arms the day battles magnificently stern array the thunder clouds close o'er it which when rent the earth is covered thick with other clay which her own clay shall cover heaped and pent rider and horse friend foe in one red burial blent Twenty nine. their praise is hymned by loftier harps than mine yet one i would select from that proud throng partly because they blend me with his line and partly that i did his sire some wrong and partly that bright names will hallow song and his was of the bravest and when showered the death bolts deadliest the thinned files along even where the thickest of war's tempest lowered they reached no nobler breast than thine young gallant howard thirty there have been tears and breaking hearts for thee and mine were nothing had i such to give but when i stood beneath the fresh green tree which living waves where thou didst cease to live and saw around me the wild field revive with fruits and fertile promise and the spring come forth her work of gladness to contrive with all her reckless birds upon the wing i turned from all she brought to those she could not bring thirty one i turned to thee to thousands of whom each and one as all a ghastly gap did make in his own kind and kindred whom to teach forgetfulness were mercy for their sake the archangel's trump not glories must awake those whom they thirst for though the sound of fame may for a moment soothe it cannot slake the fever of vain longing and the name so honoured but assumes a stronger bitterer claim thirty two they mourn but smile at length and smiling mourn the tree will wither long before it fall 
the hull drives on though mast and sail be torn the roof tree sinks but moulders on the hall in massy hoariness the ruined wall stands when its wind-worn battlements are gone the bars survive the captive they enthrall the day drags through though storms keep out the sun and thus the heart will break yet brokenly live on thirty three e'en is a broken mirror which the glass in every fragment multiplies and makes a thousand images of one that was the same and still the more the more it breaks and thus the heart will do which not forsakes living in shattered guise and still and cold and bloodless with its sleepless sorrow aches yet withers on till all without is old showing no visible sign for such things are untold thirty four there is a very life in our despair vitality of poison a quick root which feeds these deadly branches for it were as nothing did we die but life will suit itself to sorrow's most detested fruit like to the apples on the dead sea shore all ashes to the taste did man compute existence by enjoyment and count o'er such hours against years of life say would he name three score thirty five the psalmist numbered out the years of man they are enough and if thy tale be true thou who didst grudge him in that fleeting span more than enough thou fatal waterloo millions of tongues record thee and anew their children's lips shall echo them and say here where the sword united nations drew our countrymen were warring on that day and this is much and all which will not pass away thirty six there sunk the greatest nor the worst of men whose spirit antithetically mixed one moment of the mightiest and again on little objects with like firmness fixed extreme in all things hadst thou been betwixt thy throne had still been thine or never been for daring made thy rise as fall thou seek'st even now to reassume the imperial mien and shake again the world the thunderer of the scene thirty seven conqueror and captive of the earth art thou she trembles at thee still and thy wild name was ne'er more bruited in men's minds than now that thou art nothing save the jest of fame who wooed thee once thy vassal and became the flatterer of thy fierceness till thou wert a god unto thyself nor less the same to the astounded kingdoms all inert who deemed thee for a time whate'er thou didst assert thirty eight o oh, more or less than man in high or low battling with nations flying from the field now making monarchs next thy footstool now more than thy meanest soldier taught to yield an empire thou couldst crush command rebuild but govern not thy pettiest passion nor however deeply in men's spirits skilled look through thine own nor curb the lust of war nor learn that tempted fate will leave the loftiest star thirty nine yet well thy soul hath brooked the turning tide with that untaught innate philosophy which be it wisdom coldness or deep pride is gall and wormwood to an enemy when the whole host of hatred stood hard by to watch and mock thee shrinking thou hast smiled with a sedate and all-enduring eye when fortune fled her spoiled and favourite child he stood unbowed beneath the ills upon him piled forty sager than in thy fortunes for in them ambition steeled thee on too far to show that just habitual scorn which could contemn men and their thoughts twas wise to feel not so to wear it ever on thy lip and brow and spurn the instruments thou wert to use till they were turned unto thine overthrow tis but a worthless world to win or lose so hath it proved to thee and all such lot who choose forty one if like a tower upon a headland rock thou hadst been made to stand or fall alone such scorn of man had helped to brave the shock but men's thoughts were the steps which paved thy throne their admiration thy best weapon shone the part of philip's son was thine not then unless aside thy purple had been thrown like stern diogenes to mock at men for sceptred cynics earth were far too wide a den forty two but quiet to quick bosoms is a hell and there hath been thy bane 
there is a fire and motion of the soul which will not dwell in its own narrow being but aspire beyond the fitting medium of desire and but once kindled quenchless evermore preys upon high adventure nor can tire of aught but rest a fever at the core fatal to him who bears to all who ever bore forty three this makes the mad men who have made men mad by their contagion conquerors and kings founders of sects and systems to whom add sophists bards statesmen all unquiet things which stir too strongly the soul's secret springs and are themselves the fools to those they fool envied yet how unenviable what stings are theirs one breast laid open were a school which would unteach mankind the lust to shine or rule forty four their breath is agitation and their life a storm whereon they ride to sink at last and yet so nursed and bigoted to strife that should their days surviving perils past melt to calm twilight they feel overcast with sorrow and supineness and so die even as a flame unfed which runs to waste with its own flickering or a sword laid by which eats into itself and rusts ingloriously 45 he who ascends to mountain tops shall find the loftiest peaks most wrapped in clouds and snow he who surpasses or subdues mankind must look down on the hate of those below though high above the sun of glory glow and far beneath the earth and ocean spread round him are icy rocks and loudly blow contending tempests on his naked head and thus reward the toils which to those summits led 46 away with these true wisdom's world will be within its own creation or in thine maternal nature for who teems like thee thus on the banks of thy majestic rhine there harold gazes on a work divine a blending of all beauties streams and dells fruit foliage crag wood cornfield mountain vine and chiefless castles breathing stern farewells from gray but leafy walls where ruin greenly dwells 47 and there they stand as stands a lofty mind worn but unstooping to the baser crowd all tenantless save to the crannying wind or holding dark communion with the cloud there was a day when they were young and proud banners on high and battles passed below but they who fought are in a bloody shroud and those which waved a shredless dust ere now and the bleak battlements shall bear no future blow 48 beneath these battlements within those walls power dwelt amidst her passions in proud state each robber chief upheld his armored halls doing his evil will nor less elate than mightier heroes of a longer date what want these outlaws conquerors should have but history's purchased page to call them great a wider space an ornamented grave their hopes were not less warm their souls were full as brave forty nine in their baronial feuds and single fields what deeds of prowess unrecorded died and love which lent a blazon to their shields with emblems well devised by amorous pride through all the mail of iron hearts would glide but still their flame was fierceness and drew on keen contest and destruction near allied and many a tower for some fair mischief won saw the discoloured rhine beneath its ruin run Fifty but thou exulting and abounding river making thy waves a blessing as they flow through banks whose beauty would endure for ever could man but leave thy bright creation so nor its fair promise from the surface mow with the sharp scythe of conflict then to see thy valley of sweet waters were to know earth paved like heaven and to seem such to me even now what wants thy stream that it should lethe be fifty one a thousand battles have assailed thy banks but these and half their fame have passed away and slaughter heaped on high his weltering ranks their very graves are gone and what are they thy tide washed down the blood of yesterday and all was stainless and on thy clear stream glassed with its dancing light the sunny ray but o'er the blackened memory's blighting dream thy waves would vainly roll all sweeping as they seem 52 thus haroldingly said and passed along 
yet not insensible to all which here awoke the jocund birds to early song in glens which might have made in exile dear though on his brow were graven lines austere and tranquil sternness which had ta'en the place of feelings fiery afar but less severe joy was not always absent from his face but o'er it in such scenes would steal with transient trace fifty three nor was all love shut from him though his days of passion had consumed themselves to dust it is in vain that we would coldly gaze on such as smile upon us the heart must leap kindly back to kindness though disgust hath weaned it from all worldlings thus he felt for there was soft remembrance and sweet trust in one fond breast to which his own would melt and in its tenderer hour on that his bosom dwelt fifty four and he had learned to love i know not why for this in such as him seems strange of mood the helpless looks of blooming infancy even in its earliest nurture what subdued to change like this a mind so far imbued with scorn of man it little boots to know but thus it was and though in solitude small power the nippered affectations have to grow in him this glowed when all beside had ceased to glow fifty five and there was one soft breast as hath been said which unto his was bound by stronger ties than the church links withal and though unwed that love was pure and far above disguise had stood the test of mortal enmities still undivided and cemented more by peril dreaded most in female eyes but this was firm and from a foreign shore well to that heart might his these absent greetings pour the castled crag of drachenfels frowns o'er the wide and winding rhine whose breast of waters broadly swells between the banks which bear the vine and hills all rich with blossomed trees and fields which promise corn and wine and scattered cities crowning these whose far white walls along them shine have strewed a scene which i should see with double joy wert thou with me and peasant girls with deep blue eyes and hands which offer early flowers walk smiling o'er this paradise above the frequent feudal towers through green leaves lift their walls of grey and many a rock which steeply lowers and noble arch in proud decay look o'er this vale of vintage bowers but one thing want these banks of rhine thy gentle hand to clasp in mine i send the lilies given to me though long before thy hand thy touch i know that they must withered be but yet reject them not as such for i have cherished them as dear because they yet may meet thine eye and guide thy soul to mine e'en here when thou behold'st them drooping nigh and know'st them gathered by the rhine and offered from my heart to thine the river nobly foams and flows the charm of this enchanted ground and all its thousand turns disclose some fresher beauty varying round the haughtiest breast its wish might bound through life to dwell delighted here nor could on earth a spot be found to nature and to me so dear could thy dear eyes in following mine still sweeten more these banks of rhine fifty six by coblentz on a rise of gentle ground there is a small and simple pyramid crowning the summit of the verdant mound beneath its base a hero's ashes hid our enemies but let not that forbid honour to marceau o'er whose early tomb tears big tears gushed from the rough soldier's lid lamenting and yet envying such a doom falling for france whose rights he battled to resume fifty seven brief brave and glorious was his young career his mourners were two hosts his friends and foes and fitly may the stranger lingering here pray for his gallant spirit's bright repose for he was freedom's champion one of those the few in number who had not o'erstepped the charter to chastise which she bestows on such as wield her weapons he had kept the whiteness of his soul and thus men o'er him wept fifty eight here Ehren breitstein with her shattered wall black with the miner's blast upon her height yet shows of what she was when shell and ball rebounding idly on her strength did light a tower of victory from whence the flight of baffled foes was watched along the plain but peace destroyed what war could never blight and laid those proud roofs bare to summer's rain on which the iron shower for years had poured in vain 
fifty nine adieu to thee fair rhine how long delighted the stranger fain would linger on his way thine is a scene alike where souls united or lonely contemplation thus might stray and could the ceaseless vultures cease to prey on self-condemning bosoms it were here where nature not too sombre nor too gay wild but not rude awful yet not austere is to the mellow earth as autumn to the year sixty adieu to thee again a vain adieu there can be no farewell to scene like thine the mind is coloured by thy every hue and if reluctantly the eyes resign their cherished gaze upon thee lovely rhine tis with the thankful glance of parting praise more mighty spots may rise more glaring shine but none unite in one attaching maze the brilliant fair and soft the glories of old days sixty one the negligently grand the fruitful bloom of coming ripeness the white city's sheen the rolling stream the precipices gloom the forest's growth and gothic walls between the wild rocks shaped as they had turrets been in mockery of man's art and these withal a race of faces happy as the scene whose fertile bounties here extend to all still springing o'er thy banks though empires near them fall sixty two but these recede above me are the alps the palaces of nature whose vast walls have pinnacled in clouds their snowy scalps and throned eternity in icy halls of cold sublimity where forms and falls the avalanche the thunderbolt of snow all that expands the spirit yet appalls gathers around these summits as to show how earth may pierce to heaven yet leave vain man below sixty three but ere these matchless heights i dare to scan there is a spot should not be passed in vain mora the proud the patriot field where man may gaze on ghastly trophies of the slain nor blush for those who conquered on that plain here burgundy bequeathed his tombless host a bony heap through ages to remain themselves their monument the stygian coast unsepulchred they roamed and shrieked each wandering ghost sixty four while waterloo with canai's carnage vies mora and marathon twin names shall stand they were true glory's stainless victories won by the unambitious heart and hand of a proud brotherly and civic band all unbought champions in no princely cause of vice entailed corruption they no land doomed to bewail the blasphemy of laws making king's rights divine by some draconic clause sixty five by a lone wall a lonelier column rears a grey and grief-worn aspect of old days tis the last remnant of the wreck of years and looks as with the wild bewildered gaze of one to stone converted by a maze yet still with consciousness and there it stands making a marvel that it not decays when the coeval pride of human hands levelled aventicum hath strewed her subject lands sixty six and there o oh sweet and sacred be the name julia the daughter the devoted gave her youth to heaven her heart beneath a claim nearest to heaven's broke o'er a father's grave justice is sworn gainst tears and hers would crave the life she lived in but the judge was just and then she died on him she could not save their tomb was simple and without a bust and held within their urn one mind one heart one dust sixty seven but these are deeds which should not pass away and names that must not wither though the earth forgets her empires with a just decay the enslavers and the enslaved their death and birth the high the mountain majesty of worth should be and shall survivor of its woe and from its immortality look forth in the sun's face like yonder alpine snow imperishably pure beyond all things below sixty eight Lake Leman woos me with its crystal face, the mirror where the stars and mountains view the stillness of their aspect in each trace, its clear depth yields of their far height and hue. There is too much of man here to look through with a fit mind the might which I behold, but soon in me shall loneliness renew thoughts hid, but not less cherished than of old, ere mingling with the herd had penned me in their fold. 69 to fly from need not be to hate mankind 
all are not fit with them to stir and toil nor is it discontent to keep the mind deep in its fountain lest it overboil in one hot throng where we become the spoil of our infection till too late and long we may deplore and struggle with the coil in wretched interchange of wrong for wrong midst a contentious world striving where none are strong seventy there in a moment we may plunge our years in fatal penitence and in the blight of our own soul turn all our blood to tears and colour things to come with hues of night the race of life becomes a hopeless flight to those that walk in darkness on the sea the boldest steer but where their ports invite but there are wanderers o'er eternity whose bark drives on and on and anchored ne'er shall be seventy one is it not better then to be alone and love earth only for its earthly sake by the blue rushing of the arrowy rhone or the pure bosom of its nursing lake which feeds it as a mother who doth make a fair but froward infant her own care kissing its cries away as these awake is it not better thus our lives to wear than join the crushing crowd doomed to inflict or bear seventy two i live not in myself but i become portion of that around me and to me high mountains are a feeling but the hum of human cities torture i can see nothing to loathe in nature save to be a link reluctant in a fleshly chain classed among creatures when the soul can flee and with the sky the peak the heaving plain of ocean or the stars mingle and not in vain seventy three and thus i am absorbed and this is life i look upon the peopled desert past as on a place of agony and strife where for some sin to sorrow i was cast to act and suffer but remount at last with a fresh pinion which i felt to spring though young yet waxing vigorous as the blast which it would cope with on delighted wing spurning the clay-cold bonds which round our being cling seventy four and when at length the mind shall be all free from what it hates in this degraded form reft of its carnal life save what shall be existent happier in the fly and worm when elements to elements conform and dust is as it should be shall i not feel all i see less dazzling but more warm the bodiless thought the spirit of each spot of which even now i share at times the immortal lot Seventy five are not the mountains waves and skies a part of me and of my soul as i of them is not the love of these deep in my heart with a pure passion should i not contemn all objects if compared with these and stem a tide of suffering rather than forego such feelings for the hard and worldly phlegm of those whose eyes are only turned below gazing upon the ground with thoughts which dare not glow Seventy six but this is not my theme and i return to that which is immediate and require those who find contemplation in the urn to look on one whose dust was once all fire a native of the land where i respire the clear air for a while a passing guest where he became a being whose desire was to be glorious twas a foolish quest the which to gain and keep he sacrificed all rest seventy seven here the self-torturing sophist wild rousseau the apostle of affliction he who threw enchantment over passion and from woe wrung overwhelming eloquence first drew the breath which made him wretched yet he knew how to make madness beautiful and cast o'er erring deeds and thoughts a heavenly hue of words like sunbeams dazzling as they passed the eyes which o'er them shed tears feelingly and fast seventy eight his love was passion's essence as a tree on fire by lightning with ethereal flame kindled he was and blasted for to be thus and enamoured were in him the same but his was not the love of living dame nor of the dead who rise upon our dreams but of ideal beauty which became in him existence and o'erflowing teems along his burning page distempered though it seems seventy nine this breathed itself to life in julie this invested her with all that's wild and sweet this hallowed too the memorable kiss which every morn his fevered lip would greet from hers who but with friendship his would meet 
but to that gentle touch through brain and breast flashed the thrilled spirit's love-devouring heat in that absorbing sigh perchance more blest than vulgar minds may be with all they seek possessed eighty his life was one long war with self-sought foes or friends by himself banished for his mind had grown suspicion's sanctuary and chose for its own cruel sacrifice the kind against whom he raged with fury strange and blind but he was frenzied wherefore who may know since cause might be which skill could never find but he was frenzied by disease or woe to that worst pitch of all which wears a reasoning show eighty one for then he was inspired and from him came as from the pythian's mystic cave of yore those oracles which set the world in flame nor ceased to burn till kingdoms were no more did he not this for france which lay before bowed to the inborn tyranny of years broken and trembling to the yoke she bore till by the voice of him and his compeers roused up to too much wrath which follows o'ergrown fears eighty two they made themselves a fearful monument the wreck of old opinions things which grew breathed from the birth of time the veil they rent and what behind it lay all earth shall view but good with ill they also overthrew leaving but ruins wherewith to rebuild upon the same foundation and renew dungeons and thrones which the same hour refilled as heretofore because ambition was self-willed eighty three but this will not endure nor be endured mankind have felt their strength and made it felt they might have used it better but allured by their new vigour sternly have they dealt on one another pity ceased to melt with her once natural charities but they who in oppression's darkness caved had dwelt they were not eagles nourished with the day what marvel then at times if they mistook their prey eighty four what deep wounds ever closed without a scar the hearts bleed longest and but heal to wear that which disfigures it and they who war with their own hopes and have been vanquished bear silence but not submission in his lair fixed passion holds his breath until the hour which shall atone for years none need despair it came it cometh and will come the power to punish or forgive in one we shall be slower eighty five clear placid le mans thy contrasted lake with the wild world i dwelt in is a thing which warns me with its stillness to forsake earth's troubled waters for a purer spring this quiet sail is as a noiseless wing to waft me from distraction once i loved torn ocean's roar but thy soft murmuring sounds sweet as if a sister's voice reproved that i with stern delights should e'er have been so moved eighty six it is the hush of night and all between thy margin and the mountains dusk yet clear mellowed and mingling yet distinctly seen save darkened jura whose capped heights appear precipitously steep and drawing near there breathes a living fragrance from the shore of flowers yet fresh with childhood on the ear drops the light drip of the suspended oar or chirps the grasshopper one good night carol more eighty seven he is an evening reveller who makes his life an infancy and sings his fill at intervals some bird from out the brakes starts into voice a moment then is still there seems a floating whisper on the hill but that is fancy for the starlight dews all silently their tears of love instill weeping themselves away till they infuse deep into nature's breast the spirit of her hues eighty eight ye stars which are the poetry of heaven if in your bright leaves we would read the fate of men and empires tis to be forgiven that in our aspirations to be great our destinies o'erleap their mortal state and claim a kindred with you for ye are a beauty and a mystery and create in us such love and reverence from afar that fortune fame power life have named themselves a star eighty nine all heaven and earth are still though not in sleep but breathless as we grow when feeling most and silent as we stand in thoughts too deep all heaven and earth are still from the high host of stars to the lulled lake and mountain coast all is consented in a life intense 
where not a beam nor air nor leaf is lost but hath a part of being and a sense of that which is of all creator and defence ninety then stirs the feeling infinite so felt in solitude where we are least alone a truth which through our being then doth melt and purifies from self it is a tone the soul and source of music which makes known eternal harmony and sheds a charm like to the fabled cytherea's zone binding all things with beauty twould disarm the spectre death had he substantial power to harm ninety one nor vainly did the early persian make his altar the high places and the peak of earth or gazing mountains and thus take a fit and unwalled temple there to seek the spirit in whose honour shrines are weak upreared of human hands come and compare columns and idol dwellings goth or greek with nature's realms of worship earth and air nor fix on fond abodes to circumscribe thy prayer ninety two the sky is changed and such a change o night and storm and darkness ye are wondrous strong yet lovely in your strength as is the light of a dark eye in woman far along from peak to peak the rattling crags among leaps the live thunder not from one lone cloud but every mountain now hath found a tongue and dura answers through her misty shroud back to the joyous alps who call to her aloud ninety three and this is in the night most glorious night thou wert not sent for slumber let me be a sharer in thy fierce and far delight a portion of the tempest and of thee how the lit lake shines a phosphoric sea and the big rain comes dancing to the earth and now again tis black and now the glee of the loud hills shakes with its mountain mirth as if they did rejoice o'er a young earthquake's birth ninety four now where the swift roan cleaves his way between heights which appear as lovers who have parted in hate whose mining depths so intervene that they can meet no more though broken-hearted though in their souls which thus each other thwarted love was the very root of the fond rage which blighted their life's bloom and then departed itself expired but leaving them an age of years all winters war within themselves to wage ninety five now where the quick roan thus hath cleft his way the mightiest of the storms hath ta'en his stand for here not one but many make their play and fling their thunderbolts from hand to hand flashing and cast around of all the band the brightest through these parted hills hath forked his lightnings as if he did understand that in such gaps as desolation worked there the hot shaft should blast whatever therein lurked ninety six sky mountains river winds lake lightnings ye with night and clouds and thunder and a soul to make these felt and feeling well may be things that have made me watchful the far roll of your departing voices is the knoll of what in me is sleepless if i rest but where of ye o tempests is the goal are ye like those within the human breast or do ye find at length like eagles some high nest ninety seven could i embody and unbosom now that which is most within me could i wreak my thoughts upon expression and thus throw soul heart mind passions feelings strong or weak all that i would have sought and all i seek bear know feel and yet breathe into one word and that one word were lightning i would speak but as it is i live and die unheard with a most voiceless thought sheathing it as a sword ninety eight the morn is up again the dewy morn with breath all incense and with cheek all bloom laughing the clouds away with playful scorn and living as if earth contained no tomb and glowing into day we may resume the march of our existence and thus i still on thy shores fair le mans may find room and food for meditation nor pass by much that may give us pause if pondered fittingly ninety nine clarence sweet clarence birthplace of deep love thine air is the young breath of passionate thought thy trees take root in love the snows above the very glaciers have his colours caught and sunset into rose hues sees them wrought by rays which sleep there lovingly the rocks the permanent crags tell here of love who sought in them a refuge from the worldly shocks 
which stir and sting the soul with hope that woos then mocks one hundred clarence by heavenly feet thy paths are trod undying loves who here ascends a throne to which the steps are mountains where the god is a pervading life and light so shown not on those summits solely nor alone in the still cave and forest or the flower his eye is sparkling and his breath hath blown his soft and summer breath whose tender power passes the strength of storms in their most desolate hour 101 all things are here of him from the black pines which are his shade on high and the loud roar of torrents where he listeneth to the vines which slope his green path downward to the shore where the bowed waters meet him and adore kissing his feet with murmurs and the wood the covert of old trees with trunks all hoar but light leaves young as joy stands where it stood offering to him and his a populous solitude 102 a populous solitude of bees and birds and fairy formed and many coloured things who worship him with notes more sweet than words and innocently open their glad wings fearless and full of life the gush of springs and fall of lofty fountains and the bend of stirring branches and the bud which brings the swiftest thought of beauty here extend mingling and made by love unto one mighty end a hundred and three he who hath loved not here would learn that lore and make his heart a spirit he who knows that tender mystery will love the more for this is love's recess where vain men's woes and the world's waste have driven him far from those for tis his nature to advance or die he stands not still but or decays or grows into a boundless blessing which may vie with the immortal lights in its eternity 104 was not for fiction chose rousseau this spot peopling it with affections but he found it was the scene which passion must allot to the mind's purified beings twas the ground where early love his psyche's zone unbound and hallowed it with loveliness tis lone and wonderful and deep and hath a sound and sense and sight of sweetness here the rhone hath spread himself a couch the alps have reared a throne a hundred and five lausanne and fernet ye have been the abodes of names which unto you bequeathed a name mortals who sought and found by dangerous roads a path to perpetuity of fame they were gigantic minds and their steep aim was titan-like on daring doubts to pile thoughts which should call down thunder and the flame of heaven again assailed if heaven the while on man and man's research could deign do more than smile 106 the one was fire and fickleness a child most mutable in wishes but in mind a wit as various gay grave sage or wild historian bard philosopher combined he multiplied himself among mankind the proteus of their talents but his own breathed most in ridicule which as the wind blew where it listed laying all things prone now to o'erthrow a fool and now to shake a throne 107 the other deep and slow exhausting thought and hiving wisdom with each studious year in meditation dwelt with learning wrought and shaped his weapon with an edge severe sapping a solemn creed with solemn sneer the lord of irony that master spell which stung his foes to wrath which grew from fear and doomed him to the zealot's ready hell which answers to all doubts so eloquently well 108 yet peace be with their ashes for by them if merited the penalty is paid it is not ours to judge far less condemn the hour must come when such things shall be made known unto all or hope and dread allayed by slumber on one pillow in the dust which thus much we are sure must lie decayed and when it shall revive as is our trust twill be to be forgiven or suffer what is just 109 but let me quit man's works again to read his makers spread around me and suspend this page which from my reveries i feed until it seems prolonging without end the clouds above me to the white alps tend and i must pierce them and survey whate'er may be permitted 
as my steps i bend to their most great and growing region where the earth to her embrace compels the powers of air 110 italia to italia looking on thee full flashes on the soul the light of ages since the fierce carthaginian almost won thee to the last halo of the chiefs and sages who glorify thy consecrated pages thou wert the throne and grave of empires still the fount at which the panting mind assuages her thirst of knowledge quaffing there her fill flows from the eternal source of rome's imperial hill 111 thus far have i proceeded in a theme renewed with no kind auspices to feel we are not what we have been and to deem we are not what we should be and to steel the heart against itself and to conceal with a proud caution love or hate or aught passion or feeling purpose grief or zeal which is the tyrant spirit of our thought is a stern task of soul no matter it is taught 112 and for these words thus woven into song it may be that they are a harmless while the colouring of the scenes which fleet along which i would seize in passing to beguile my breast or that of others for a while fame is the thirst of youth but i am not so young as to regard men's frown or smile as loss or guerdon of a glorious lot i stood and stand alone remembered or forgot 113 i have not loved the world nor the world me i have not flattered its rank breath nor bowed to its idolatries a patient knee nor coined my cheek to smiles nor cried aloud in worship of an echo in the crowd they could not deem me one of such i stood among them but not of them in a shroud of thoughts which were not their thoughts and still could had i not filed my mind which thus itself subdued 114 i have not loved the world nor the world me but let us part fair foes i do believe though i have found them not that there may be words which are things hopes which will not deceive and virtues which are merciful nor weave snares for the falling i would also deem or others griefs that some sincerely grieve that two or one are almost what they seem that goodness is no name and happiness no dream 115 my daughter with thy name this song begun my daughter with thy name this much shall end i see thee not i hear thee not but none can be so wrapped in thee thou art the friend to whom the shadows of far years extend albeit my brow thou never shouldst behold my voice shall with thy future visions blend and reach into thy heart when mine is cold a token and a tone even from thy father's mould 116 to aid thy mind's development to watch thy dawn of little joys to sit and see almost thy very growth to view thee catch knowledge of objects wonders yet to thee to hold thee lightly on a gentle knee and print on thy soft cheek a parent's kiss this it should seem was not reserved for me yet this was in my nature as it is i know not what is there yet something like to this 117 yet though dull hate as duty should be taught i know that thou wilt love me though my name should be shut from thee as a spell still fraught with desolation and a broken claim though the grave closed between us twere the same i know that thou wilt love me though to drain my blood from out thy being were an aim and an attainment all would be in vain still thou wouldst love me still that more than life retain 118 the child of love though born in bitterness and nurtured in convulsion of thy sire these were the elements and thine no less and yet such are around thee but thy fire shall be more tempered and thy hope far higher sweet be thy cradled slumbers o'er the sea and from the mountains where i now respire fain would i waft such blessing upon thee as with a sigh i deem thou mightst have been to me End of section 3。section 4 of Child Harold's Pilgrimage by George Gordon Lord Byron 
This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Canto the Fourth, Part One. One. I stood in Venice on the bridge of sighs, a palace and a prison on each hand. I saw from out the wave her structures rise, as from the stroke of the enchanter's wand. A thousand years their cloudy wings expand around me, and a dying glory smiles o'er the far times when many a subject land looked to the winged lion's marble piles, where Venice sat in state, throned on her hundred isles. Two. She looks a sea Sibylle, fresh from ocean rising with her tiara of proud towers at airy distance with majestic motion a ruler of the waters and their powers and such she was her daughters had their dowers from spoils of nations and the exhaustless east poured in her lap all gems in sparkling showers in purple was she robed and of her feast monarchs partook and deemed their dignity increased three in venice tasso's echoes are no more and silent rose the songless gondolier her palaces are crumbling to the shore and music meets not always now the ear those days are gone but beauty still is here states fall arts fade but nature doth not die nor yet forget how venice once was dear the pleasant place of all festivity the revel of the earth the mask of italy Four but unto us she hath a spell beyond her name in story and her long array of mighty shadows whose dim forms despond above the dogeless city's vanished sway ours is a trophy which will not decay with the rialto shylock and the moor and pierre cannot be swept or worn away the keystones of the arch though all were o'er for us repeopled were the solitary shore five the beings of the mind are not of clay essentially immortal they create and multiply in us a brighter ray and more beloved existence that which fate prohibits to dull life in this our state of mortal bondage by these spirits supplied first exiles then replaces what we hate watering the heart whose early flowers have died and with a fresher growth replenishing the void six such is the refuge of our youth and age the first from hope the last from vacancy and this worn feeling peoples many a page and may be that which grows beneath mine eye yet there are things whose strong reality outshines our fairy land in shape and hues more beautiful than our fantastic sky and the strange constellations which the muse o'er her wild universe is skilful to diffuse seven i saw or dreamed of such but let them go they came like truth and disappeared like dreams and whatsoe'er they were are now but so i could replace them if i would still teems my mind with many a form which aptly seems such as i sought for and at moments found let these too go for waking reason deems such overweening fantasies unsound and other voices speak and other sights surround Eight i've taught me other tongues and in strange eyes have made me not a stranger to the mind which is itself no changes bring surprise nor is it harsh to make nor hard to find a country with ay or without mankind yet was i born where men are proud to be not without cause and should i leave behind the inviolate island of the sage and free and seek me out a home by a remoter sea nine perhaps i loved it well and should i lay my ashes in a soil which is not mine my spirit shall resume it if we may unbodied choose a sanctuary i twine my hopes of being remembered in my line with my land's language if too fond and far these aspirations in their scope incline if my fame should be as my fortunes are of hasty growth and blight and dull oblivion bar Ten my name from out the temple where the dead are honoured by the nations let it be and light the laurels on a loftier head and be the spartan's epitaph on me sparta hath many a worthier son than he meantime i seek no sympathies nor need the thorns which i have reaped are of the tree i planted they have torn me and i bleed i should have known what fruit would spring from such a seed eleven the spouseless adriatic mourns her lord 
and annual marriage now no more renewed the bucentaur lies rotting unrestored neglected garment of her widowhood st mark yet sees his lion where he stood stand but in mockery of his withered power over the proud place where an emperor sued and monarchs gazed and envied in the hour when venice was a queen with an unequalled dower twelve the suabian sued and now the austrian reigns an emperor tramples where an emperor knelt kingdoms are shrunk to provinces and chains clank over sceptred cities nations melt from power's high pinnacle when they have felt the sunshine for a while and downward go like lauwine loosened from the mountain's belt oh for one hour of blind old dandolo the octogenarian chief byzantium's conquering foe thirteen before st mark still glow his steeds of brass their gilded collars glittering in the sun but is not doria's menace come to pass are they not bridled venice lost and won her thirteen hundred years of freedom done sinks like a seaweed into whence she rose better be whelmed beneath the waves and shun even in destruction's depth her foreign foes from whom submission wrings an infamous repose fourteen in youth she was all glory a new tire her very byword sprung from victory the planter of the lion which through fire and blood she bore o'er subject earth and sea though making many slaves herself still free and europe's bulwark gainst the ottomite witness troy's rival candia vouch it ye immortal waves that saw lepanto's fight for ye are names no time nor tyranny can blight fifteen statues of glass all shivered the long file of her dead doges are declined to dust but where they dwelt the vast and sumptuous pile bespeaks the pageant of their splendid trust their sceptre broken and their sword in rust have yielded to the stranger empty halls thin streets and foreign aspects such as must too oft remind her who and what enthralls have flung a desolate cloud o'er venice's lovely walls sixteen when athens's armies fell at syracuse and fettered thousands bore the yoke of war redemption rose up in the attic muse her voice there only ransom from afar see as they chant the tragic hymn the car of the o'ermastered victor stops the reins fall from his hands his idle scimitar starts from its belt he rends his captive's chains and bids him thank the bard for freedom and his strains seventeen thus venice if no stronger claim were thine were all thy proud historic deeds forgot thy choral memory of the bard divine thy love of tasso should have cut the knot which ties thee to thy tyrants and thy lot is shameful to the nations most of all albion to thee the ocean queen should not abandon ocean's children in the fall of venice think of thine despite thy watery wall eighteen i loved her from my boyhood she to me was as a fairy city of the heart rising like water columns from the sea of joy the sojourn and of wealth the mart and otway radcliffe schiller shakespeare's art had stamped her image in me and e'en so although i found her thus we did not part perchance e'en dearer in her day of woe than when she was a boast a marvel and a show nineteen I can repeople with the past, and of the present there is still for eye and thought, and meditation chastened down, enough. And more, it may be, than I hoped or sought. And of the happiest moments which were wrought within the web of my existence, some from thee, fair Venice, have their colours caught. There are some feelings time cannot benumb, nor torture shake, or mine would now be cold and dumb. 20 but from their nature will the tannin grow loftiest on loftiest and least sheltered rocks rooted in barrenness where naught below of soil supports them gainst the alpine shocks of eddying storms yet springs the trunk and mocks the howling tempest till its height and frame are worthy of the mountains from whose blocks of bleak grey granite into life it came and grew a giant tree the mind may grow the same Twenty one existence may be born and the deep root of life and sufferance make its firm abode in bare and desolate bosoms mute the camel labours with the heaviest load and the wolf dies in silence 
not bestowed in vain should such examples be if they things of ignoble or of savage mood endure and shrink not we of nobler clay may temper it to bear it is but for a day twenty two all suffering doth destroy or is destroyed even by the sufferer and in each event ends some with hope replenished and reboyed return to whence they came with like intent and weave their web again some bowed and bent wax grey and ghastly withering ere their time and perish with the reed on which they lent some seek devotion toil war good or crime according as their souls were formed to sink or climb twenty three but ever and anon of griefs subdued there comes a token like a scorpion's sting scarce seen but with fresh bitterness imbued and slight withal may be the things which bring back on the heart the weight which it would fling aside for ever it may be a sound a tone of music summer's eve or spring a flower the wind the ocean which shall wound striking the electric chain wherewith we are darkly bound twenty four and how and why we know not nor can trace home to its cloud this lightning of the mind but feel the shock renewed nor can efface the blight and blackening which it leaves behind which out of things familiar undesigned when least we deem of such calls up to view the spectres whom no exorcism can bind the cold the changed perchance the dead anew the mourned the loved the lost too many yet how few twenty five but my soul wanders i demand it back to meditate amongst decay and stand a ruin amidst ruins there to track fallen states and buried greatness o'er a land which was the mightiest in its old command and is the loveliest and must ever be the master mould of nature's heavenly hand wherein were cast the heroic and the free the beautiful the brave the lords of earth and sea twenty six the commonwealth of kings the men of rome and even since and now fair italy thou art the garden of the world the home of all art yields and nature can decree even in thy desert what is like to thee thy very weeds are beautiful thy waste more rich than other climes fertility thy wreck a glory and thy ruin graced with an immaculate charm which cannot be defaced twenty seven the moon is up and yet it is not night sunset divides the sky with her a sea of glory streams along the alpine height of blue friuli's mountains heaven is free from clouds but of all colours seems to be melted to one vast iris of the west where the day joins the past eternity while on the other hand meek dian's crest floats through the azure air an island of the blest twenty eight a single star is at her side and reigns with her o'er half the lovely heaven but still yon sunny sea heaves brightly and remains rolled o'er the peak of the far ratian hill as day and night contending were until nature reclaimed her order gently flows the deep dyed brenta where their hues instill the odorous purple of a new-born rose which streams upon her stream and glassed within it glows twenty nine filled with the face of heaven which from afar comes down upon the waters all its hues from the rich sunset to the rising star their magical variety diffuse and now they change a paler shadow strews its mantle o'er the mountains parting day dies like the dolphin whom each pang imbues with a new colour as it gasps away the last still loveliest till tis gone and all is grey thirty there is a tomb in arqua reared in air pillared in their sarcophagus repose the bones of laura's lover here repair many familiar with his well-sung woes the pilgrims of his genius he arose to raise a language and his land reclaim from the dull yoke of her barbaric foes watering the tree which bears his lady's name with his melodious tears he gave himself to fame thirty one they keep his dust in arqua where he died the mountain village where his latter days went down the vale of years and tis their pride an honest pride and let it be their praise to offer to the passing stranger's gaze his mansion and his sepulchre 
both plain and venerably simple such as raise a feeling more accordant with his strain than if a pyramid formed his monumental fane thirty two and the soft quiet hamlet where he dwelt is one of that complexion which seems made for those who their mortality have felt and sought a refuge from their hopes decayed in the deep umbrage of a green hill's shade which shows a distant prospect far away of busy cities now in vain displayed for they can lure no further and the ray of a bright sun can make sufficient holiday thirty three developing the mountains leaves and flowers and shining in the brawling brook whereby clear as its current glide the sauntering hours with a calm languor which though to the eye id less it seem hath its morality if from society we learn to live tis solitude should teach us how to die it hath no flatterers vanity can give no hollow aid alone man with his god must strive thirty four or it may be with demons who impair the strength of better thoughts and seek their prey in melancholy bosoms such as were of moody texture from their earliest day and loved to dwell in darkness and dismay deeming themselves predestined to a doom which is not of the pangs that pass away making the sun like blood the earth a tomb the tomb a hell and hell itself a murkier gloom thirty five ferrara in thy wide and grass-grown streets whose symmetry was not for solitude there seems as twere a curse upon the seats of former sovereigns and the antique brood of este which for many an age made good its strength within thy walls and was of yore patron or tyrant as the changing mood of petty power impelled of those who wore the wreath which dante's brow alone had worn before thirty six and tasso is their glory and their shame hark to his strain and then survey his cell and see how dearly earned torquato's fame and where alfonso bade his poet dwell the miserable despot could not quell the insulted mind he sought to quench and blend with the surrounding maniacs in the hell where he had plunged it glory without end scattered the clouds away and on that name attend thirty seven the tears and praises of all time while thine would rot in its oblivion in the sink of worthless dust which from thy boasted line is shaken into nothing but the link thou formest in his fortunes bids us think of thy poor malice naming thee with scorn alfonso how thy ducal pageants shrink from thee if in another station born scarce fit to be the slave of him thou madest to mourn thirty eight thou formed to eat and be despised and die even as the beasts that perish save that thou hadst a more splendid trough and wider sty he with a glory round his furrowed brow which emanated then and dazzles now in face of all his foes the cruscan choir and boileau whose rash envy could allow no strain which shamed his country's creaking lyre that whetstone of the teeth monotony in wire thirty nine peace to torquato's injured shade twas his in life and death to be the mark where wrong aimed with their poisoned arrows but to miss o victor unsurpassed in modern song each year brings forth its millions but how long the tide of generations shall roll on and not the whole combined and countless throng compose a mind like thine though all in one condensed their scattered rays they would not form a sun forty great as thou art yet paralleled by those thy countrymen before thee born to shine the bards of hell and chivalry first rose the tuscan father's comedy divine then not unequal to the florentine the southern scot the minstrel who called forth a new creation with his magic line and like the ariosto of the north sang lady love and war romance and knightly worth forty one the lightning rent from ariosto's bust the iron crown of laurel's mimicked leaves nor was the ominous element unjust for the true laurel wreath which glory weaves is of the tree no bolt of thunder cleaves yet the false semblance but disgraced his brow yet still if fondly superstition grieves know that the lightning sanctifies below whate'er it strikes yon head is doubly sacred now 
42. Italia, O oh Italia, thou who hast the fatal gift of beauty, which became a funeral dower of present woes and past, on thy sweet brow is sorrow ploughed by shame, and annals graved in characters of flame. O oh God, that thou wert in thy nakedness less lovely or more powerful, and couldst claim thy right and awe the robbers back, who press to shed thy blood and drink the tears of thy distress. 43 then mightst thou more appall or less desired be homely and be peaceful undeplored for thy destructive charms then still untired would not be seen the armoured torrents poured down the deep alps nor would the hostile horde of many nations spoilers from the po quaff blood and water nor the stranger's sword be thy sad weapon of defence and so victor or vanquished thou the slave of friend or foe forty four wandering in youth i traced the path of him the roman friend of rome's least mortal mind the friend of tully as my bark did skim the bright blue waters with a fanning wind came megara before me and behind aegina lay piraeus on the right corinth on the left i lay reclined along the prow and saw all these unite in ruin even as he had seen the desolate sight forty five for time hath not rebuilt them but upreared barbaric dwellings on their shattered site which only make more mourned and more endeared the few last rays of their far scattered light and the crushed relics of their vanished might the roman saw these tombs in his own age these sepulchres of cities which excite sad wonder and his yet surviving page the moral lesson bears drawn from such pilgrimage forty six that page is now before me and on mine his country's ruin added to the mass of perished states he mourned in their decline and i in desolation all that was of then destruction is and now alas rome rome imperial bows her to the storm in the same dust and blackness and we pass the skeleton of her titanic form wrecks of another world whose ashes still are warm forty seven yet italy through every other land thy wrongs should ring and shall from side to side mother of arts as once of arms thy hand was then our guardian and is still our guide parent of our religion whom the wide nations have knelt to for the keys of heaven europe repentant of her parricide shall yet redeem thee and all backward driven roll the barbarian tide and sue to be forgiven forty eight but arno wins us to the fair white walls where the etrurian athens claims and keeps a softer feeling for her fairy halls girt by her theatre of hills she reaps her corn and wine and oil and plenty leaps to laughing life with her redundant horn along the banks where smiling arno sweeps was modern luxury of commerce born and buried learning rose redeemed to a new morn forty nine there too the goddess loves in stone and fills the air around with beauty we inhale the ambrosial aspect which beheld instills part of its immortality the veil of heaven is half undrawn within the pale we stand and in that form and face behold what mind can make when nature's self would fail and to the fond idolaters of old envy the innate flash which such a soul could mould Fifty. We gaze and turn away and know not where dazzled and drunk with beauty till the heart reels with its fullness there forever there chained to the chariot of triumphal art we stand as captives and would not depart away there need no words nor terms precise the paltry jargon of the marble mart where pedantry gulls folly we have eyes blood pulse and breast confirm the dardan shepherd's prize fifty one appearedst thou not to paris in this guise or to more deeply blessed anchises or in all thy perfect goddess-ship when lies before thee thy own vanquished lord of war and gazing in thy face as toward a star laid on thy lap his eyes to thee upturn feeding on thy sweet cheek while thy lips are with lava kisses melting while they burn showered on his eyelids brow and mouth as from an urn Fifty two glowing and circumfused in speechless love their full divinity inadequate that feeling to express or to improve 
the gods become as mortals and man's fate has moments like their brightest but the weight of earth recoils upon us let it go we can recall such visions and create from what has been or might be things which grow into thy statue's form and look like gods below fifty three i leave to learned fingers and wise hands the artist and his ape to teach and tell how well his connoisseurship understands the graceful bend and the voluptuous swell let these describe the undescribable i would not their vile breath should crisp the stream wherein that image shall for ever dwell the unruffled mirror of the loveliest dream that ever left the sky on the deep soul to beam fifty four in santa croce's holy precincts lie ashes which make it holier dust which is e'en in itself an immortality though there were nothing save the past and this the particle of those sublimities which have relapsed to chaos here repose angelo's alfieri's bones and his the starry galileo with his woes here machiavelli's earth returned to whence it rose fifty five these are four minds which like the elements might furnish forth creation italy time which hath wronged thee with ten thousand rents of thine imperial garment shall deny and hath denied to every other sky spirits which soar from ruin thy decay is still impregnate with divinity which gilds it with revivifying ray such as the great of yore canova is to-day fifty six but where repose the all etruscan three dante and petrarch and scarce less than they the bard of prose creative spirit he of the hundred tales of love where did they lay their bones distinguished from our common clay in death as life are they resolved to dust and have their country's marbles naught to say could not her quarries furnish forth one bust did they not to her breast their filial earth entrust fifty seven ungrateful florence dante sleeps afar like scipio buried by the upbraiding shore thy factions in their worse than civil war proscribed the bard whose name for evermore their children's children would in vain adore with the remorse of ages and the crown which petrarch's laureate brow supremely wore upon a far and foreign soil had grown his life his fame his grave though rifled not thine own fifty eight boccaccio to his parent earth bequeathed his dust and lies it not her great among with many a sweet and solemn requiem breathed o'er him who formed the tuscan siren tongue that music in itself whose sounds are song the poetry of speech no even his tomb uptorn must bear the hyena bigot's wrong no more amidst the meaner dead find room nor claim a passing sigh because it told for whom Fifty nine and santa croce wants their mighty dust yet for this want more noted as of yore the caesar's pageant shorn of brutus's bust did but of rome's best son remind her more happier ravenna on thy hoary shore fortress of falling empire honoured sleeps the immortal exile arqua too her store of tuneful relics proudly claims and keeps while florence vainly begs her banished dead and weeps Sixty what is her pyramid of precious stones of porphyry jasper agate and all hues of gem and marble to encrust the bones of merchant dukes the momentary dews which sparkling to the twilight stars infuse freshness in the green turf that wraps the dead whose names are mausoleums of the muse are gently pressed with far more reverent tread than ever paced the slab which paves the princely head sixty one there be more things to greet the heart and eyes in arno's dome of art's most princely shrine where sculpture with her rainbow sister vies there be more marvels yet but not for mine for i have been accustomed to entwine my thoughts with nature rather in the fields than art in galleries though a work divine calls for my spirit's homage yet it yields less than it feels because the weapon which it wields sixty two is of another temper and i roam by thrasymenes lake in the defiles fatal to roman rashness more at home for there the carthaginian's warlike wiles come back before me as his skill beguiles the host between the mountains and the shore where courage falls in her despairing files 
and torrents swollen to rivers with their gore reek through the sultry plain with legions scattered o'er sixty three like to a forest felled by mountain winds and such the storm of battle on this day and such the frenzy whose convulsion blinds to all save carnage that beneath the fray an earthquake reeled unheededly away none felt stern nature rocking at his feet and yawning forth a grave for those who lay upon their bucklers for a winding sheet such is the absorbing hate when warring nations meet sixty four the earth to them was as a rolling bark which bore them to eternity they saw the ocean round but had no time to mark the motions of their vessel nature's law in them suspended recked not of the awe which reigns when mountains tremble and the birds plunge in the clouds for refuge and withdraw from their down toppling nests and bellowing herds stumble o'er heaving plains and man's dread hath no words sixty five far other scene is thrasymene now her lake a sheet of silver and her plain rent by no ravage save the gentle plough her aged trees rise thick as once the slain lay where their roots are but a brook hath ta'en a little rill of scanty stream and bed a name of blood from that day's sanguine rain and sanguinetto tells ye where the dead made the earth wet and turned the unwilling waters red sixty six but thou clitumnus in thy sweetest wave of the most living crystal that was e'er the haunt of river nymph to gaze and lave her limbs where nothing hid them thou dost rear thy grassy banks whereon the milk-white steer grazes the purest god of gentle waters and most serene of aspect and most clear surely that stream was unprofaned by slaughters a mirror and a bath for beauty's youngest daughters sixty seven and on thy happy shore a temple still of small and delicate proportion keeps upon a mild declivity of hill its memory of thee beneath it sweeps thy current's calmness oft from out it leaps the finny darter with the glittering scales who dwells and revels in thy glassy deeps while chance some scattered water lily sails down where the shallower wave still tells its bubbling tales sixty eight pass not unblessed the genius of the place if through the air a zephyr more serene win to the brow tis his and if ye trace along his margin a more eloquent green if on the heart the freshness of the scene sprinkle its coolness and from the dry dust of weary life a moment lave it clean with nature's baptism tis to him ye must pay orisons for this suspension of disgust sixty nine the roar of waters from the headlong height velino cleaves the wave-worn precipice the fall of waters rapid as the light the flashing mass foams shaking the abyss the hell of waters where they howl and hiss and boil in endless torture while the sweat of their great agony wrung out from this their phlegathon curls round the rocks of jet that gird the gulf around in pitiless horror set seventy and mounts in spray the skies and thence again returns in an unceasing shower which round with its unemptied cloud of gentle rain is an eternal april to the ground making it all one emerald how profound the gulf and how the giant element from rock to rock leaps with delirious bound crushing the cliffs which downward worn and rent with his fierce footsteps yield in chasms a fearful vent seventy one to the broad column which rolls on and shows more like the fountain of an infant sea torn from the womb of mountains by the throes of a new world than only thus to be parent of rivers which flow gushingly with many windings through the vale look back lo where it comes like an eternity as if to sweep down all things in its track charming the eye with dread a matchless cataract seventy two horribly beautiful but on the verge from side to side beneath the glittering morn an iris sits amidst the infernal surge like hope upon a deathbed and unworn its steady dies while all around is torn by the distracted waters bears serene its brilliant hues with all their beams unshorn resembling mid the torture of the scene love watching madness with unalterable mien seventy three 
once more upon the woody apennine the infant alps which had i not before gazed on their mightier parents where the pine sits on more shaggy summits and where roar the thundering lawine might be worshipped more but i have seen the soaring jungfrau rear her never-trodden snow and seen the hoar glaciers of bleak mont blanc both far and near and in kimari heard the thunder hills of fear seventy four the acroceraunian mountains of old name and on parnassus seen the eagles fly like spirits of the spot as twere for fame for still they soared unutterably high i've looked on ida with a trojan's eye athos olympus etna atlas made these hills seem things of lesser dignity all save the lone soracte's height displayed not now in snow which asks the lyric roman's aid seventy five for our remembrance and from out the plain heaves like a long-swept wave about to break and on the curl hangs pausing not in vain may he who will his recollections rake and quote in classic raptures and awake the hills with latian echoes i abhorred too much to conquer for the poet's sake the drilled dull lesson forced down word by word in my repugnant youth with pleasure to record seventy six aught that recalls the daily drug which turned my sickening memory and though time hath taught my mind to meditate what then it learned yet such the fixed inveteracy wrought by the impatience of my early thought that with the freshness wearing out before my mind could relish what it might have sought if free to choose i cannot now restore its health but what it then detested still abhor seventy seven then farewell horace whom i hated so not for thy faults but mine it is a curse to understand not feel thy lyric flow to comprehend but never love thy verse although no deeper moralist rehearse our little life nor bard prescribe his art nor livelier satirist the conscience pierce awakening without wounding the touched heart yet fare thee well upon saracte's ridge we part seventy eight o rome my country city of the soul the orphans of the heart must turn to thee lone mother of dead empires and control in their shut breasts their petty misery what are our woes and sufferance come and see the cypress hear the owl and plod your way o'er steps of broken thrones and temples ye whose agonies are evils of a day a world is at our feet as fragile as our clay seventy nine the niobe of nations there she stands childless and crownless in her voiceless woe an empty urn within her withered hands whose holy dust was scattered long ago the scipio's tomb contains no ashes now the very sepulchres lie tenantless of their heroic dwellers dost thou flow old tiber through a marble wilderness rise with thy yellow waves and mantle her distress eighty the goth the christian time war flood and fire have dwelt upon the seven hilled city's pride she saw her glories star by star expire and up the steep barbarian monarch's ride where the car climbed the capitol far and wide temple and tower went down nor left a sight chaos of ruins who shall trace the void or the dim fragments cast a lunar light and say here was or is where all is doubly night eighty one the double night of ages and of her night's daughter ignorance hath wrapped and wrap all around us we but feel our way to her the ocean hath its chart the stars their map and knowledge spreads them on her ample lap but rome is as the desert where we steer stumbling o'er recollections now we clap our hands and cry eureka it is clear when but some false mirage of ruin rises near eighty two alas the lofty city and alas the trebly hundred triumphs and the day when brutus made the dagger's edge surpass the conqueror's sword in bearing fame away alas for tully's voice and virgil's lay and livy's pictured page but these shall be her resurrection all beside decay alas for earth for never shall we see that brightness in her eye she bore when rome was free eighty three 
o thou whose chariot rolled on fortune's wheel triumphant scylla thou who didst subdue thy country's foes ere thou wouldst pause to feel the wrath of thy own wrongs or reap the dew of hoarded vengeance till thine eagles flew o'er prostrate asia thou who with thy frown annihilated senates roman too with all thy vices for thou didst lay down with an atoning smile a more than earthly crown eighty four the dictatorial wreath couldst thou divine to what would one day dwindle that which made thee more than mortal and that so supine by aught than romans rome should thus be laid she who was named eternal and arrayed her warriors but to conquer she who veiled earth with her haughty shadow and displayed until the o'er canopied horizon failed her rushing wings oh she who was almighty hailed eighty five scylla was first of victors but our own the sagest of usurpers cromwell he too swept off senates while he hewed the throne down to a block immortal rebel see what crimes it costs to be a moment free and famous through all ages but beneath his fate the moral lurks of destiny his day of double victory and death beheld him win two realms and happier yield his breath 86 the third of the same moon whose former course had all but crowned him on the self-same day deposed him gently from his throne of force and laid him with the earth's preceding clay and showed not fortune thus how fame and sway and all we deem delightful and consume our souls to compass through each arduous way are in her eyes less happy than the tomb were they but so in man's how different were his doom eighty seven and thou dread statue yet existent in the austerest form of naked majesty thou who beheldest mid the assassin's din at thy bathed base the bloody caesar lie folding his robe in dying dignity an offering to thine altar from the queen of gods and men great nemesis did he die and thou too perish pompey have ye been victors of countless kings or puppets of a scene 88 and thou the thunder-stricken nurse of rome she-wolf whose brazen imaged dugs impart the milk of conquest yet within the dome where as a monument of antique art thou standest mother of the mighty heart which the great founder sucked from thy wild teat scorched by the roman jove's ethereal dart and thy limbs blacked with lightning dost thou yet guard thine immortal cubs nor thy fond charge forget eighty nine thou dost but all thy foster babes are dead the men of iron and the world hath reared cities from out their sepulchres men bled in imitation of the things they feared and fought and conquered and the same course steered at apish distance but as yet none have nor could the same supremacy have neared save one vain man who is not in the grave but vanquished by himself to his own slaves a slave ninety the fool of false dominion and a kind of bastard caesar following him of old with steps unequal for the roman's mind was modelled in a less terrestrial mould with passions fiercer yet a judgment cold and an immortal instinct which redeemed the frailties of a heart so soft yet bold alcides with the distaff now he seemed at cleopatra's feet and now himself he beamed ninety one and came and saw and conquered but the man who would have tamed his eagles down to flee like a trained falcon in the gallic van which he in sooth long led to victory with a deaf heart which never seemed to be a listener to itself was strangely framed with but one weakest weakness vanity coquettish in ambition still he aimed at what can he avouch or answer what he claimed ninety two and would be all or nothing nor could wait for the sure grave to level him few years had fixed him with the caesars in his fate on whom we tread for this the conqueror rears the arch of triumph and for this the tears and blood of earth flow on as they have flowed an universal deluge which appears without an ark for wretched man's abode 
and ebbs but to reflow renew thy rainbow god ninety three what from this barren being do we reap our senses narrow and our reason frail life short and truth a gem which loves the deep and all things weighed in custom's falsest scale opinion an omnipotence whose veil mantles the earth with darkness until right and wrong are accidents and men grow pale lest their own judgments should become too bright and their free thoughts be crimes and earth have too much light ninety four and thus they plod in sluggish misery rotting from sire to son and age to age proud of their trampled nature and so die bequeathing their hereditary rage to the new race of inborn slaves who wage war for their chains and rather than be free bleed gladiator-like and still engage within the same arena where they see their fellows fall before like leaves of the same tree ninety five i speak not of men's creeds they rest between man and his maker but of things allowed averred and known and daily hourly seen the yoke that is upon us doubly bowed and the intent of tyranny avowed the edict of earth's rulers who are grown the apes of him who humbled once the proud and shook them from their slumbers on the throne too glorious were this all his mighty arm had done ninety six can tyrants but by tyrants conquered be and freedom find no champion and no child such as columbia saw arise when she sprung forth a palace armed and undefiled or must such minds be nourished in the wild deep in the unpruned forest midst the roar of cataracts where nursing nature smiled on infant washington has earth no more such seeds within her breast or europe no such shore ninety seven but france got drunk with blood to vomit crime and fatal have her saturnalia been to freedom's cause in every age and clime because the deadly days which we have seen and vile ambition that built up between man and his hopes an adamantine wall and the base pageant last upon the scene are grown the pretext for the eternal thrall which nips life's tree and dooms man's worst his second fall ninety eight yet freedom yet thy banner torn but flying streams like the thunderstorm against the wind thy trumpet voice though broken now and dying the loudest still the tempest leaves behind thy tree hath lost its blossoms and the rind chopped by the axe looks rough and little worth but the sap lasts and still the seed we find sown deep even in the bosom of the north so shall a better spring less bitter fruit bring forth End of Canto the Fourth, Part One. Section Five of Child Harold's Pilgrimage by George Gordon, Lord Byron. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Canto the Fourth, Part Two. Ninety Nine there is a stern round tower of other days firm as a fortress with its fence of stone such as an army's baffled strength delays standing with half its battlements alone and with two thousand years of ivy grown the garland of eternity where wave the green leaves over all by time o'erthrown what was this tower of strength within its cave what treasure lay so locked so hid a woman's grave One hundred but who was she the lady of the dead tombed in a palace was she chaste and fair worthy a king's or more a roman's bed what race of chiefs and heroes did she bear what daughter of her beauties was the heir how lived how loved how died she was she not so honoured and conspicuously there where meaner relics must not dare to rot placed to commemorate a more than mortal lot One hundred and one was she as those who love their lords or they who love the lords of others such have been even in the olden time rome's annals say was she a matron of cornelia's mien or the light air of egypt's graceful queen profuse of joy or against it did she war inveterate in virtue did she lean to the soft side of the heart or wisely bar love from amongst her griefs for such the affections are 
102. Perchance she died in youth, it may be bowed with woes far heavier than the ponderous tomb that weighed upon her gentle dust, a cloud might gather o'er her beauty, and a gloom in her dark eye, prophetic of the doom heaven gives its favourites, early death, yet shed a sunset charm around her, and illume with hectic light the Hesperus of the dead, of her consuming cheek the autumnal leaf-like red. 103. Perchance she died in age, surviving all, charms, kindred, children, with the silver grey on her long tresses, which might yet recall, it may be, still a something of the day when they were braided, and her proud array and lovely form were envied, praised, and eyed by Rome. But whither would conjecture stray? Thus much alone we know, Metella died, the wealthiest Roman's wife. Behold his love or pride. 104. I know not why, but standing thus by thee, it seems as if I had thine inmate known, thou tomb, and other days come back on me with recollected music, though the tone is changed and solemn, like the cloudy groan of dying thunder on the distant wind. Yet could I seat me by this ivied stone till I had bodied forth the heated mind, forms from the floating wreck which ruin leaves behind. 105 and from the planks far shattered o'er the rocks built me a little bark of hope once more to battle with the ocean and the shocks of the loud breakers and the ceaseless roar which rushes on the solitary shore where all lies founded that was ever dear but could i gather from the wave-worn store enough for my rude boat where should i steer there woos no home nor hope nor life save what is here Hundred and six then let the winds howl on their harmony shall henceforth be my music and the night the sound shall temper with the owlet's cry as i now hear them in the fading light dim o'er the bird of darkness's native sight answer each other on the palatine with their large eyes all glistening grey and bright and sailing pinions upon such a shrine what are our petty griefs let me not number mine Hundred and seven cypress and ivy weed and wallflower grown matted and massed together hillocks heaped on what were chambers arch crushed columns strown in fragments choked up vaults and frescoes steeped in subterranean damps where the owl peeped deeming it midnight temples baths or halls pronounce who can for all that learning reaped from her research hath been that these are walls behold the imperial mount tis thus the mighty falls 108. There is the moral of all human tales, tis but the same rehearsal of the past, first freedom, and then glory, when that fails, wealth, vice, corruption, barbarism at last. And history, with all her volumes vast, hath but one page, tis better written here, where gorgeous tyranny hath thus amassed all treasures, all delights, that eye or ear, heart, soul could seek, tongue ask, away with words, draw near, 109. Admire, exult, despise, laugh, weep, for here there is such matter for all feeling. Man, thou pendulum betwixt a smile and tear, ages and realms are crowded in this span, this mountain, whose obliterated plan the pyramid of empires pinnacled, of glory's gewgaws shining in the van, till the sun's rays with added flame were filled. Where are its golden roofs? Where those who dared to build? 110. Tully was not so eloquent as thou, thou nameless column with the buried base. What are the laurels of the Caesar's brow? Crown me with ivy from his dwelling place. Whose arch or pillar meets me in the face? Titus or Trajan's? No, tis that of time. Triumph, arch, pillar, all he doth displace, scoffing, and apostolic statues climb to crush the imperial urn, whose ashes slept sublime. 111. Buried in air, the deep blue sky of Rome, and looking to the stars, they had contained a spirit which with these would find a home, the last of those who o'er the whole earth reigned, the Roman globe, for after none sustained but yielded back his conquests, he was more than a mere Alexander, and unstained with household blood and wine, serenely wore his sovereign virtues. Still we Trajan's name adore. 112. 
where is the rock of triumph the high place where rome embraced her heroes where the steep tarpeian fittest goal of treason's race the promontory whence the traitor's leap cured all ambition did the conquerors heap their spoils here yes and in yon field below a thousand years of silenced factions sleep the forum where the immortal accents glow and still the eloquent air breathes burns with cicero hundred and thirteen the field of freedom faction fame and blood here a proud people's passions were exhaled from the first hour of empire in the bud to that when further worlds to conquer failed but long before had freedom's face been veiled and anarchy assumed her attributes till every lawless soldier who assailed trod on the trembling senate's slavish mutes or raised the venal voice of baser prostitutes 114 then turn we to our latest tribune's name from her ten thousand tyrants turn to thee redeemer of dark centuries of shame the friend of petrarch hope of italy rienzi last of romans while the tree of freedom's withered trunk puts forth a leaf even for thy tomb a garland let it be the forum's champion and the people's chief her new-born numa thou with rain alas too brief 115 egeria sweet creation of some heart which found no mortal resting place so fair as thine ideal breast whate'er thou art or wert a young aurora of the air the nympholepsy of some fond despair or it might be a beauty of the earth who found a more than common votary there too much adoring whatsoe'er thy birth thou wert a beautiful thought and softly bodied forth 116 the mosses of thy fountain still are sprinkled with thine elysian water drops the face of thy cave guarded spring with years unwrinkled reflects the meek-eyed genius of the place whose green wild margin now no more erase art's works nor must the delicate waters sleep prisoned in marble bubbling from the base of the cleft statue with a gentle leap the rill runs o'er and round fern flowers and ivy creep 117 fantastically tangled the green hills are clothed with early blossoms through the grass the quick-eyed lizard rustles and the bills of summer birds sing welcome as ye pass flowers fresh in hue and many in their class implore the pausing step and with their dyes dance in the soft breeze in a fairy mass the sweetness of the violet's deep blue eyes kissed by the breath of heaven seems colored by its skies 118 here didst thou dwell in this enchanted cover egeria thy all heavenly bosom beating for the far footsteps of thy mortal lover the purple midnight veiled that mystic meeting with her most starry canopy and seating thyself by thine adorer what befell this cave was surely shaped out for the greeting of an enamoured goddess and the cell haunted by holy love the earliest oracle 119 and didst thou not thy breast to his replying blend a celestial with a human heart and love which dies as it was born in sighing share with immortal transports could thine art make them indeed immortal and impart the purity of heaven to earthly joys expel the venom and not blunt the dart the dull satiety which all destroys and root from out the soul the deadly weed which cloys 120 alas our young affections run to waste or water but the desert whence arise but weeds of dark luxuriance tears of haste rank at the core though tempting to the eyes flowers whose wild odours breathe but agonies and trees whose gums are poison such the plants which spring beneath her steps as passion flies o'er the world's wilderness and vainly pants for some celestial fruit forbidden to our wants Hundred and twenty one. O love no habitant of earth thou art an unseen seraph we believe in thee a faith whose martyrs are the broken heart but never yet hath seen nor e'er shall see the naked eye thy form as it should be the mind hath made thee as it peopled heaven even with its own desiring fantasy and to a thought such shape and image given as haunts the unquenched soul parched wearied wrung and riven 122 of its own beauty is the mind diseased and fevers into false creation where where are the forms the sculptor's soul hath seized 
in him alone can nature show so fair where are the charms and virtues which we dare conceive in boyhood and pursue as men the unreached paradise of our despair which o'er informs the pencil and the pen and overpowers the page where it would bloom again 123 who loves raves tis youth's frenzy but the cure is bitterer still as charm by charm unwinds which robed our idols and we see too sure nor worth nor beauty dwells from out the mind's ideal shape of such yet still it binds the fatal spell and still it draws us on reaping the whirlwind from the oft-sown winds the stubborn heart its alchemy begun seems ever near the prize wealthiest when most undone 124 we wither from our youth we gasp away sick sick unfound the boon unslaked the thirst though to the last in verge of our decay some phantom lures such as we sought at first but all too late so are we doubly cursed love fame ambition avarice tis the same each idle and all ill and none the worst for all are meteors with a different name and death the sable smoke where vanishes the flame 125 few none find what they love or could have loved though accident blind contact and the strong necessity of loving have removed antipathies but to recur ere long envenomed with irrevocable wrong and circumstance that unspiritual god and miscreator makes and helps along our coming evils with a crutch-like rod whose touch turns hope to dust the dust we all have trod 126 our life is a false nature tis not in the harmony of things this hard decree this uneradicable taint of sin this boundless upas this all-blasting tree whose root is earth whose leaves and branches be the skies which rain their plagues on men like dew disease death bondage all the woes we see and worse the woes we see not which throb through the immedicable soul with heartaches ever new 127 yet let us ponder boldly tis a base abandonment of reason to resign our right of thought our last and only place of refuge this at least shall still be mine though from our birth the faculty divine is chained and tortured cabined cribbed confined and bred in darkness lest the truth should shine too brightly on the unprepared mind the beam pours in for time and skill will couch the blind Hundred and twenty-eight archers on archers as it were that rome collecting the chief trophies of her line would build up all her triumphs in one dome her coliseum stands the moonbeams shine as twere its natural torches for divine should be the light which streams here to illume this long explored but still exhaustless mine of contemplation and the azure gloom of an italian night where the deep skies assume Hundred and twenty-nine hues which have words and speak to ye of heaven floats o'er this vast and wondrous monument and shadows forth its glory there is given unto the things of earth which time hath bent a spirit's feeling and where he hath lent his hand but broke his scythe there is a power and magic in the ruined battlement for which the palace of the present hour must yield its pomp and wait till ages are its dower 130 o time the beautifier of the dead adorner of the ruin comforter and only healer when the heart hath bled time the corrector where our judgments are the test of truth love soul philosopher for all beside are sophists from thy thrift which never loses though it doth defer time the avenger unto thee i lift my hands and eyes and heart and crave of thee a gift Hundred and thirty one amidst this wreck where thou hast made a shrine and temple more divinely desolate among thy mightier offerings here are mine ruins of years though few yet full of fate if thou hast ever seen me too elate hear me not but if calmly i have borne good and reserved my pride against the hate which shall not whelm me let me not have worn this iron in my soul in vain shall they not mourn 132 and thou who never yet of human wrong left the unbalanced scale great nemesis here where the ancients paid thee homage long thou who didst call the furies from the abyss 
and round orestes made them howl and hiss for that unnatural retribution just had it been but from hands less near in this thy former realm i call thee from the dust dost thou not hear my heart awake thou shalt and must 133 it is not that i may not have incurred for my ancestral faults or mine the wound i bleed withal and had it been conferred with a just weapon it had flowed unbound but now my blood shall not sink in the ground to thee i do devote it thou shalt take the vengeance which shall yet be sought and found which if i have not taken for the sake but let that pass i sleep but thou shalt yet awake 134 and if my voice break forth tis not that now i shrink from what is suffered let him speak who hath beheld decline upon my brow or seen my mind's convulsion leave it weak but in this page a record will i seek not in the air shall these my words disperse though i be ashes a far hour shall wreak the deep prophetic fullness of this verse and pile on human heads the mountain of my curse 135 that curse shall be forgiveness have i not hear me my mother earth behold it heaven have i not had to wrestle with my lot have i not suffered things to be forgiven have i not had my brain seared my heart riven hopes sapped name blighted life's life lied away and only not to desperation driven because not altogether of such clay as rots into the souls of those whom i survey 136 from mighty wrongs to petty perfidy have i not seen what human things could do from the loud roar of foaming calumny to the small whisper of the as paltry few and subtler venom of the reptile crew the janus glance of whose significant eye learning to lie with silence would seem true and without utterance save the shrug or sigh deal round to happy fools its speechless obloquy Hundred and thirty-seven but i have lived and have not lived in vain my mind may lose its force my blood its fire and my frame perish even in conquering pain but there is that within me which shall tire torture and time and breathe when i expire something unearthly which they deem not of like the remembered tone of a mute lyre shall on their softened spirits sink and move in hearts all rocky now the late remorse of love 138 the seal is set now welcome thou dread power nameless yet thus omnipotent which here walks in the shadow of the midnight hour with a deep awe yet all distinct from fear thy haunts are ever where the dead walls rear their ivy mantles and the solemn scene derives from thee a sense so deep and clear that we become a part of what has been and grow unto the spot all seeing but unseen 139 and here the buzz of eager nations ran in murmured pity or loud roared applause as man was slaughtered by his fellow man and wherefore slaughtered wherefore but because such were the bloody circus's genial laws and the imperial pleasure wherefore not what matters where we fall to fill the maws of worms on battle plains or listed spot both are but theatres where the chief actors rot Hundred and forty i see before me the gladiator lie he leans upon his hand his manly brow consents to death but conquers agony and his drooped head sinks gradually low and through his side the last drops ebbing slow from the red gash fall heavy one by one like the first of a thunder shower and now the arena swims around him he is gone ere ceased the inhuman shout which hailed the wretch who won 141 he heard it but he heeded not his eyes were with his heart and that was far away he recked not of the life he lost nor prize but where his rude hut by the danube lay there were his young barbarians all at play there was their dacian mother he their sire butchered to make a roman holiday all this rushed with his blood shall he expire and unavenged arise ye goths and glut your ire 142 but here where murder breathed her bloody steam and here where buzzing nations choked the ways and roared or murmured like a mountain stream dashing or winding as its torrent strays 
here where the roman millions blame or praise was death or life the playthings of a crowd my voice sounds much and fall the stars faint rays on the arena void seats crushed walls bowed and galleries where my steps seem echoes strangely loud 143 a ruin yet what ruin from its mass walls palaces half cities have been reared yet oft the enormous skeleton ye pass and marvel where the spoil could have appeared hath it indeed been plundered or but cleared alas developed opens the decay when the colossal fabric's form is neared it will not bear the brightness of the day which streams too much on all years man have reft away 144 but when the rising moon begins to climb its topmost arch and gently pauses there when the stars twinkle through the loops of time and the low night breeze waves along the air the garland forest which the grey walls wear like laurels on the bald first caesar's head when the light shines serene but doth not glare then in this magic circle raise the dead heroes have trod this spot tis on their dust ye tread 145 while stands the Colosseum, rome shall stand when falls the Colosseum, rome shall fall and when rome falls the world from our own land thus spake the pilgrims o'er this mighty wall in saxon times which we are wont to call ancient and these three mortal things are still on their foundations and unaltered all rome and her ruin past redemption's skill the world the same wide den of thieves or what ye will 146 simple erect severe austere sublime shrine of all saints and temple of all gods from jove to jesus spared and blessed by time looking tranquillity while falls or nods arch empire each thing round thee and man plods his way through thorns to ashes glorious dome shalt thou not last time's scythe and tyrant's rods shiver upon thee sanctuary and home of art and piety pantheon pride of rome 147 relic of nobler days and noblest arts despoiled yet perfect with thy circle spreads a holiness appealing to all hearts to art a model and to him who treads rome for the sake of ages glory sheds her light through thy sole aperture to those who worship here are altars for their beads and they who feel for genius may repose their eyes on honored forms whose busts around them close 148 there is a dungeon in whose dim drear light what do i gaze on nothing look again two forms are slowly shadowed on my sight two insulated phantoms of the brain it is not so i see them full and plain an old man and a female young and fair fresh as a nursing mother in whose vein the blood is nectar but what doth she there with her unmantled neck and bosom white and bare 149 full swells the deep pure fountain of young life where on the heart and from the heart we took our first and sweetest nurture when the wife blessed into mother in the innocent look or even the piping cry of lips that brook no pain and small suspense a joy perceives man knows not when from out its cradled nook she sees her little bud put forth its leaves what may the fruit be yet i know not cain was eve's Hundred and fifty but here youth offers to old age the food the milk of his own gift it is her sire to whom she renders back the debt of blood born with her birth no he shall not expire while in those warm and lovely veins the fire of health and holy feeling can provide great nature's nile whose deep stream rises higher than egypt's river from that gentle side drink drink and live old man heaven's realm holds no such tide 151 the starry fable of the milky way has not thy story's purity it is a constellation of a sweeter ray and sacred nature triumphs more in this reverse of her decree than in the abyss where sparkle distant worlds o holiest nurse no drop of that clear stream its way shall miss to thy sire's heart replenishing its source with life as our freed souls rejoin the universe 152 
turn to the mole which hadrian reared on high imperial mimic of old egypt's piles colossal copyist of deformity whose travelled fantasy from the far niles enormous model doomed the artist's toils to build for giants and for his vain earth his shrunken ashes raise this dome how smiles the gazer's eye with philosophic mirth to view the huge design which sprung from such a birth 153 but lo the dome the vast and wondrous dome to which diana's marvel was a cell christ's mighty shrine above his martyr's tomb i have beheld the ephesian's miracle its columns strew the wilderness and dwell the hyena and the jackal in their shade i have beheld sophia's bright roofs swell their glittering mass in the sun and have surveyed its sanctuary the while the usurping moslem prayed 154 but thou of temples old or altars new standest alone with nothing like to thee worthiest of god the holy and the true since zion's desolation when that he forsook his former city what could be of earthly structures in his honour piled of a sublimer aspect majesty power glory strength and beauty all are aisled in this eternal ark of worship undefiled 155 enter its grandeur overwhelms thee not and why it is not lessened but thy mind expanded by the genius of the spot has grown colossal and can only find a fit abode wherein appear enshrined thy hopes of immortality and thou shalt one day if found worthy so defined see thy god face to face as thou dost now his holy of holies nor be blasted by his brow 156 thou movest but increasing with advance like climbing some great alp which still doth rise deceived by its gigantic elegance vastness which grows but grows to harmonize all musical in its immensities rich marbles richer painting shrines where flame the lamps of gold and haughty dome which vies in air with earth's chief structures though their frame sits on the firm set ground and this the clouds must claim 157 thou seest not all but piecemeal thou must break to separate contemplation the great whole and as the ocean many bays will make that ask the eye so here condense thy soul to more immediate objects and control thy thoughts until thy mind hath got by heart its eloquent proportions and unroll in mighty graduations part by part the glory which at once upon thee did not dart 158 not by its fault but thine our outward sense is but of gradual grasp and as it is that what we have of feeling most intense outstrips our faint expression e'en so this outshining and o'erwhelming edifice fools our fond gaze and greatest of the great defies at first our nature's littleness till growing with its growth we thus dilate our spirits to the size of that they contemplate 159 then pause and be enlightened there is more in such a survey than the sating gaze of wonder pleased or awe which would adore the worship of the place or the mere praise of art and its great masters who could raise what former time nor skill nor thought could plan the fountain of sublimity displays its depth and thence may draw the mind of man its golden sands and learn what great conceptions can 160 or turning to the vatican go see laocoon's torture dignifying pain a father's love and mortal's agony with an immortal's patience blending vain the struggle vain against the coiling strain and gripe and deepening of the dragon's grasp the old man's clench the long envenomed chain rivets the living links the enormous asp enforces pang on pang and stifles gasp on gasp 161 or view the lord of the unerring bow the god of life and poesy and light the sun in human limbs arrayed and brow all radiant from his triumph in the fight the shaft hath just been shot the arrow bright with an immortal's vengeance in his eye and nostril beautiful disdain and might and majesty flash their full lightnings by developing in that one glance the deity 162 but in his delicate form a dream of love shaped by some solitary nymph whose breast longed for a deathless lover from above 
and maddened in that vision are expressed all that ideal beauty ever blessed the mind within its most unearthly mood when each conception was a heavenly guest a ray of immortality and stood star-like around until they gathered to a god 163 and if it be prometheus stole from heaven the fire which we endure it was repaid by him to whom the energy was given which this poetic marble hath arrayed with an eternal glory which if made by human hands is not of human thought and time himself hath hallowed it nor laid one ringlet in the dust nor hath it caught a tinge of years but breathes the flame with which twas wrought 164 but where is he the pilgrim of my song the being who upheld it through the past methinks he cometh late and tarries long he is no more these breathings are his last his wanderings done his visions ebbing fast and he himself as nothing if he was aught but a fantasy and could be classed with forms which live and suffer let that pass his shadow fades away into destruction's mass 165 which gathers shadow substance life and all that we inherit in its mortal shroud and spreads the dim and universal pole through which all things grow phantoms and the cloud between us sinks and all which ever glowed till glory's self is twilight and displays a melancholy halo scarce allowed to hover on the verge of darkness rays sadder than saddest night for they distract the gaze 166 and sends us prying into the abyss to gather what we shall be when the frame shall be resolved to something less than this its wretched essence and to dream of fame and wipe the dust from off the idle name we never more shall hear but never more o oh, happier thought can we be made the same it is enough in sooth that once we bore these fardels of the heart the heart whose sweat was gore 167 hark forth from the abyss a voice proceeds a long low distant murmur of dread sound such as arises when a nation bleeds with some deep and immedicable wound through storm and darkness yawns the rending ground the gulf is thick with phantoms but the chief seems royal still though with her head discrowned and pale but lovely with maternal grief she clasps a babe to whom her breast yields no relief 168 scion of chiefs and monarchs where art thou fond hope of many nations art thou dead could not the grave forget thee and lay low some less majestic less beloved head in the sad midnight while thy heart still bled the mother of a moment or thy boy death hushed that pang for ever with thee fled the present happiness and promised joy which filled the imperial isles so full it seemed to cloy 169 peasants bring forth in safety can it be o thou that wert so happy so adored those who weep not for kings shall weep for thee and freedom's heart grown heavy ceased to hoard her many griefs for one for she had poured her orisons for thee and o'er thy head beheld her iris thou too lonely lord and desolate consort vainly wert thou wed the husband of a year the father of the dead 170 of sackcloth was thy wedding garment made thy bridal's fruit is ashes in the dust the fair-haired daughter of the isles is laid the love of millions how we did entrust futurity to her and though it must darken above our bones yet fondly deemed our children should obey her child and blessed her and her hoped-for seed whose promise seemed like star to shepherd's eyes twas but a meteor beamed Hundred and seventy one woe unto us not her for she sleeps well the fickle reek of popular breath the tongue of hollow counsel the false oracle which from the birth of monarchy hath rung its knell in princely ears till the awe-strung nations have armed in madness the strange fate which tumbles mightiest sovereigns and hath flung against their blind omnipotence a weight within the opposing scale which crushes soon or late Hundred and seventy-two these might have been her destiny but no our hearts deny it and so young so fair good without effort great without a foe but now a bride and mother and now there how many ties did that stern moment tear 
from thy sires to his humblest subject's breast is linked the electric chain of that despair whose shock was as an earthquake's and oppressed the land which loved thee so that none could love thee best 173 lo nemi navelled in the woody hills so far that the uprooting wind which tears the oak from his foundation and which spills the ocean o'er its boundary and bears its foam against the skies reluctant spares the oval mirror of thy glassy lake and calm as cherished hate its surface wears a deep cold settled aspect nought can shake all coiled into itself and round as sleeps the snake 174 and near albano's scarce divided waves shine from a sister valley and afar the tiber winds and the broad ocean laves the latian coast where sprung the epic war arms and the man whose reascending star rose o'er an empire but beneath thy right tully reposed from rome and where yon bar of girdling mountains intercepts the sight the sabine farm was tilled the weary bard's delight 175 but i forget my pilgrim's shrine is one and he and i must part so let it be his task and mine alike are nearly done yet once more let us look upon the sea the midland ocean breaks on him and me and from the alban mount we now behold our friend of youth that ocean which when we beheld it last by calpe's rock unfold those waves we followed on till the dark eukes enrolled 176 upon the blue simplegades long years long though not very many since have done their work on both some suffering and some tears have left us nearly where we had begun yet not in vain our mortal race hath run we have had our reward and it is here that we can yet feel gladdened by the sun and reap from earth see joy almost as dear as if there were no man to trouble what is clear 177 oh that the desert were my dwelling-place with one fair spirit for my minister that i might all forget the human race and hating no one love but only her ye elements in whose ennobling stir i feel myself exalted can ye not accord me such a being do i err in deeming such inhabit many a spot though with them to converse can rarely be our lot 178 there is a pleasure in the pathless woods there is a rapture on the lonely shore there is society where none intrudes by the deep sea and music in its roar i love not man the less but nature more from these our interviews in which i steal from all i may be or have been before to mingle with the universe and feel what i can ne'er express yet cannot all conceal 179 roll on thou deep and dark blue ocean roll ten thousand fleets sweep over thee in vain man marks the earth with ruin his control stops with the shore upon the watery plain the wrecks are all thy deed nor doth remain a shadow of man's ravage save his own when for a moment like a drop of rain he sinks into thy depths with bubbling groan without a grave unknelled uncoffined and unknown 180 his steps are not upon thy paths thy fields are not a spoil for him thou dost arise and shake him from thee the vile strength he wields for earth's destruction thou dost all despise spurning him from thy bosom to the skies and sensed him shivering in thy playful spray and howling to his gods where haply lies his petty hope in some near port or bay and dashest him again to earth there let him lay 181 the armaments which thunder strike the walls of rock-built cities bidding nations quake and monarchs tremble in their capitals the oak leviathans whose huge ribs make their clay creator the vain title take of lord of thee and arbiter of war these are thy toys and as the snowy flake they melt into thy yeast of waves which mar alike the armada's pride or spoils of trafalgar 182 thy shores are empires changed in all save thee assyria greece rome carthage what are they thy waters washed them power while they were free and many a tyrant since their shores obey the stranger slave or savage 
their decay has dried up realms to deserts not so thou unchangeable save to thy wild waves play time writes no wrinkle on thine azure brow such as creation's dawn beheld thou rollest now 183 thou glorious mirror where the almighty's form glasses itself in tempests in all time calm or convulsed in breeze or gale or storm icing the pole or in the torrid clime dark heaving boundless endless and sublime the image of eternity the throne of the invisible even from out thy slime the monsters of the deep are made each zone obeys thee thou goest forth dread fathomless alone 184 and i have loved thee ocean and my joy of youthful sports was on thy breast to be borne like thy bubbles onward from a boy i wantoned with thy breakers they to me were a delight and if the freshening sea made them a terror twas a pleasing fear for i was as it were a child of thee and trusted to thy billows far and near and laid my hand upon thy mane as i do here 185 my task is done my song hath ceased my theme has died into an echo it is fit the spell should break of this protracted dream the torch shall be extinguished which hath lit my midnight lamp and what is writ is writ would it were worthier but i am not now that which i have been and my visions flit less palpably before me and the glow which in my spirit dwelt is fluttering faint and low 186 farewell a word that must be and hath been a sound which makes us linger yet farewell ye who have traced the pilgrim to the scene which is his last if in your memories dwell a thought which once was his if 